week was Friday, and he had no visible limp nor limitations as to what he could do. Now, Manning told me he would take a pain-killing injection this afternoon that should get him through the entire game. Both of his ankles are heavily taped, with the right one being splinted and padded on both sides. Meanwhile, the big story in Kansas City was the arrest of Chiefs wide receiver Dwayne Bowe on charges of speeding and possession of a controlled substance to be believed to be marijuana. Now, while the Chiefs could have benched him tonight, Bo is starting. Neither the team nor the league can formally discipline Bo until his case has been adjudicated, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. Some of the great individual matchups and team matchups. Number one scoring defense. The Chiefs haven't allowed more than 17 points in any game this season. A record-setting pace for the Denver offense. Denver has scored 30 or more points in all but one game this year. That was last week, 28 against San Diego in a victory. Last team to hold the Broncos under 25 would have been the Chiefs going back to late in the 2012 season. So the number one scoring defense, the number one scoring offense, Kansas City won the toss. They have elected to receive Matt Prater to kick off, and most of the kickoffs here in Denver at 5,200. 80 feet wind up out of the end zone. Quentin Dempse is back to try to return it. If Prater doesn't hit it perfectly, because as we say in Denver here, about 80% of the kickoffs wind up in the end zone. You saw Jack Del Rio. There is Andy Reid after 14 seasons in Philadelphia, undefeated as the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. And away we go from the Mile High City with a touchback. And right off the bat, let's take a look at the Kansas City starters. Alex Smith, Utah. Jamal Charles, Texas. Dwayne Bowe, LSU. Donnie Avery, Houston. Dexter McCluster, Ole Miss Rebel. Anthony Fasano, Notre Dame. Brandon Allen, Virginia. Jeff Allen, Illinois. Rodney Hudson, Florida State. John Azamoa, Illinois. Eric Fisher, Central Michigan. KC offense, Chris talking about it. Low risk. Don't score a lot of points, but almost never turn the ball over. Andy Reid loves what's known as the West Coast offense, and Smith knows how to run it. And before we can even start, you've got so much noise in here. That's the way it begins. John Parry with the call, making it first down and 15. Alex Smith. Last year, starting the season in San Francisco before sustaining a concussion. And as you can see, Kaepernick took over. But since the beginning of the 2011 season, 28, 5, and 1 as a starting quarterback. And only Peyton Manning, over that period of time, has a better record. So in first and 15, they give it to Charles who averages almost six yards per carry. He'll take it up to the 18-yard line. He's such a vital part of, the, of this offense, Chris. Not only running the ball, but receiving. He is their leading receiver as well as rusher. And he's second in the league in yards per scrimmage coming into the game. Yeah, had a great year last year, but he was telling us he never felt right all season. Had to stay on medication all year. They came back this season. They did a great job with his rehab, and he feels great. No medication this year. Come up here with two backs, and the pass is low and incomplete, intended for Dwayne Bowe. Covered there by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. It'll be third down and 12. Well, one of the matchups we'll see right off the bat over here, Eric Fisher, remember that name? The number one overall pick going against Sean Phillips. Struggled earlier in the season when I was watching him then. I was thinking, wait a minute, that's the number one overall pick, but he has definitely improved coming off his best game. In Denver, in the old stadium, and in this one as well, because they built in some give, and that's why the camera will shake a lot. These people are stamping their feet, and you feel the vibrations all over the stadium. Third down and 12, and that pass is incomplete behind Jamal Charles. So just what the crowd wanted, they got a false start, then it's a very fast three and out. And 45 seconds into the game, the Kansas City Chiefs will punt. Well, a very nervous beginning for the Kansas City Chiefs. Hard to say it any other way. You jump offside. You can't even complete a screen pass. This is a team that needs to come in and prove to themselves that they belong out here with the Denver Broncos and have some success early. 
Dustin Colquitt to punt. His brother is the Denver punter. And Trimden Holiday back to run it back. It's a low line drive kick. And Holiday will field it on a hop from the 36 yard line. And he's forced out of bounds up at the 47 yard line. So good field position for the Broncos. And here comes Manning as we take a look at their offense. Peyton Manning, University of Tennessee. No Sean Moreno, Georgia. Demarius Thomas, Georgia Tech. Eric Decker, Minnesota. Wes Welker, Texas Tech. Julius Thomas, Portland State University. Chris Clark, Southern Miss. Zane Beatles, Utah. Go Utes. Manny Ramirez, Texas Tech. Luis Vasquez, Texas Tech. Orlando Franklin, the U. By way of Toronto, Canada. So here go the Broncos, only huddling on first down on the change of possession. No Sean Moreno. Takes it across the 50. Manning will bring him right up to the line. After a gain of five, it'll be second down and five. And the Kansas City Chiefs defensively come right out with their dime defense, which means Eric Berry, number 29, is in the linebacker position right here. They ran right at him on first down. Off play action, Manning backing up, and that's uh, knocked down as he tried to get a screen pass away. Mike DeVito got his hands on it. It'll be third down and five. When Peyton Manning in his career has faced a team that has a nine game winning streak or better. 0 and 4 so he's faced with that situation tonight against Kansas City. Third and five. From the Chief 48. Manning in the pocket. Checks it down and winds up hitting Demarius Thomas. And he gets tackled after he picks up the first down by Sean Smith. No doubt about it that Chris Clark here on the outside who took over for Ryan Clady is going to have his hands full. And that time he had his, his hands around the neck of Damba Ali and it was good enough. Hopefully the last time we'll see that. On first down, Manning. Great protection flag is thrown. Pass intended for Demarius Thomas. You had Sean Smith covering on the play. And the penalty is going to go against the Chiefs. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding, defense, the 27, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah. Anytime you play against Denver, you have to cover all these receivers. You see the little hook right there at the top end of that route. Here's Peyton Manning. Let's take a look at this ankle, see how he's doing. Well, looks okay to this point. Whoa. And first down, a hard shot taken. By Moreno by Derek Johnson. Outstanding ninth year linebacker out of Texas. Picked him number one back in 2005. Peyton Manning already into that hyper paced Ryan. offense now. Ryan. They think that's the key to wear this Chiefs defense down. Second nine. Blitz coming and Manning hit as he throws and the pass is incomplete. Let's take a look at that Kansas City defense. Tyson Jackson, LSU. Tari Paul, Memphis. Justin Houston. George. Hakeem Jordan, James Madison. Derek Johnson, Texas. Kamba Hali, Penn State. Marcus Cooper, Rutgers, Blue Faha. Brandon Flowers, Virginia Tech. Eric Berry, Tennessee. Kendrick Lewis, Ole Miss. Shaw Smith, Pasadena. Best defense in the league in terms of points allowed are the Kansas City Chiefs. It's third down and nine. And the pass is incomplete. Chiefs looked like they were lined up in a spread defense that time. Yeah, and this is the play that you have to stop with the Denver Broncos. They have made a million miles of offense out of this quick screen to the outside. Just try and come out and block and bring Thomas back underneath. That time was played perfectly by Kansas City. You know they spent all week on that one. We're going to get a long field goal right off the bat here. 54-yard attempt for Matt Prater at altitude. So very makeable. And Prater's kick is very makeable. 54 yard field goal by Prater opens up the scoring on Sunday Night Football. Denver 3, Kansas City nothing. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Verizon, never be without football with NFL Mobile. By Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. And by Wendy's, now that's better. Snow in the mountains of Colorado, but very clear.
in Denver. Not a cloud in the sky today. Peyton Manning going over the pictures. Prater kicking a 54-yard field goal that was good by about 10 yards. It's 19 of 24 lifetime for Prater from 50 or more. And Prater, whose first kickoff resulted in a touchback. He's now two for two in that department. Let's take a look right now at the Bronco defense. Derek Wolf, Cincinnati. Kevin Vickerson, Michigan State, Spartan Dogs. Terrence Knighton, Temple Owls. Sean Phillips, Boilermakers. Vaughn Miller, Texas A&M. Wesley Woodyard, Kentucky. Danny Trevathan, Kentucky. Chris Harris, Kansas University. Duke Giannato, San Jose State. Raheem the Dream Moore, UCLA. How many Roger Martin, Tennessee State. Jack Del Rio, the interim head coach, but he has a lot of head coaching experience, nine years with the Jacksonville Jaguars. The fire there came over here under John Fox as the defensive coordinator, and right now calling the plays as Anthony Sherman makes the catch the fullback. At least he's calling the defensive plays. Danny Trevathan with the tackle. Well, one of the great decoys in all of football is Jamal Charles. I thought this was a great call here because you have to establish to the Denver Broncos defense that you are going to throw the ball, that they can't just play the run on first down. And so they're opening up a bit here for Kansas City. Anthony Sherman coming over in a trade with Arizona. A lot of guys picked up on waivers and in trades by KC as they revamp the roster. The running back is McCluster. They send him out. Pass deep downfield, and it is not caught at the 32. Donnie Avery was there, had it for the moment, and put it on the ground. And the pass is incomplete. I cannot tell you how good a throw this was. This was a back shoulder about 30 yards down the field. If he had led Avery with this one, it would have been intercepted, threw it to his back shoulder, perfectly thrown, and a play the Kansas City Chiefs and Donnie Avery have to make tonight. you got to maintain possession all the way through, contact with the ground. He did not. So it's second down and 10. Miles Davis is the running back. He is a rookie out of Arkansas, drafted in the third round. And Smith down the right side and incomplete. Intended that time for the backup tight end, Sean McGrath. It'll be third down and 10 for Kansas City. Well, they're not being shy now, are they? They're nope. coming out and firing this thing around a little bit. And I think that's the right thing. Ultimately, sometimes it's easier to get back to your running game after you've been able to prove that you are going to throw the ball. So even if this drive doesn't work out so well, they have at least established what they're willing to do against the Broncos. And there's the stamping of the feet in the stands and our camera's shaking because of it. Smith has started the game one out of five. Play clock at one. Third and ten, pressure on, he gets sacked. Sean Phillips, so many good years in San Diego, and now having a great year. That's eight and a half sacks for Phillips in his first year as a Bronco. All right, here we're going to bring the pressure. They get away with the man coverage on the back end because the pressure gets there. John Osamwa that time got beat inside quickly. Phillips around the outside, able to get there as well. Dustin Cole quick to kick. Trenton Holiday, always a threat to run it back, but he's had fumbling problems of late. Sets up at his own 25-yard line, and punt nearly blocked. Juggle, there it is again, as Holiday having trouble holding on to the ball, and he possesses it at the 27-yard line. That's where Denver will take over on their second possession. For the whole viewing experience, check out NBC Sports Live Extra on NBCSports.com. That's what the screen will look like. Michelle and Mike Florio aboard, and Will Shields, the outstanding longtime offensive lineman for Kansas City, our social media analyst. And there's Tiger Woods with Lindsey Vaughn, his girlfriend. Lindsey getting ready for the Winter Olympics in Sochi in February. See you there. We'll see you there for sure. From the from the 27-yard line, Denver begins its second possession with a handoff to Moreno, who picks up four to the 31. Very interesting case is one Noshan Moreno picked in the first round in 09, fifth year out of Georgia. Looked like he was going to be a bust. Last year, didn't even suit up for eight games, but he hung in there, stayed with it, 
McGahee not brought back. Ronnie Hillman had fumbling issues. They drafted Monte Ball. Meanwhile, Mike DeVito holding his knee is down on the ground, and we have an injury timeout. Vito able to walk off there. He is. Looks fine along the sideline. Left to come out, of course, for at least one play. And meanwhile, during that play, yeah, Brandon I, Flowers and Wes Welker. Brandon said, I don't know if you know, but we're the number one defense. I know all everybody on your team has nine touchdown passes, but uh, it's going to be a game tonight here. Okay, Wes? Second down and seven as player resumes from the 30-yard line. And Manning throws, and it's incomplete, and Thomas looks around for a flag. He got Sean Smith covering on the play. There is no flag. It's third down and seven. When it comes to converting on third downs, the Broncos are the best in the league at almost 50%, and the Chiefs are the stingiest in the league, allowing only a third down once every four third down chances for the opposition. So you got the best against the best here, as is the case with so many situations tonight with the Bronco offense and the Kansas City defense on a lot of levels. Here's where Peyton Manning has to be careful. This is pure pass rush mode now for Kansas City, and they are outstanding. Seven defensive backs in the game. Peyton has started one for five, and Denver's going to take a timeout. Well, Jack Del Rio. And the offensive coordinator is Adam Gase. And there it is, that very heavily taped right ankle and that's the I guess the classic right ankle sprain yeah the high ankle sprain basically you know low ankle sprains usually on the outside lower and the high ankle sprain ends up being up on the shin a bit there and so far tonight Peyton Manning hasn't taken a shot on that leg he looks pretty good moving around we were kind of joking with him after watching practice they're running bootlegs and sprint outs I said well you Michael Vick here I thought you're supposed to have a bad ankle I heard tonight so but anybody that's had this injury knows if you get hit on it, there is a pretty good chance it's going to happen again and be worse. So the Chiefs right now would love to get a couple of shots on number 18. You saw Adam Gase, the offensive coordinator. Last year, Mike McCoy was the offensive coordinator, and that led to the San Diego head coaching job. Third and seven after the timeout. And Manning slings it to the outside, and it is caught, but stops short of the first down as Welker. Hussein Abdullah was there to make sure he did not reach that first down mark. Well, first of all, Brandon Flowers is going to lose the coverage. Abdullah is going to make the play, but watch Flowers. This last hit really kept Welker from reaching for that first down and forced the punt team out. So not a bad start for this number one rated Kansas City Chiefs defense. And Britton Colquitt to kick. Both teams' special teams are very good. McCluster fields at the 23, tries to get around the corner, and then is forced out of bounds into the Broncos' bench up at the 37-yard line. Smith goes back to work in Denver. 3-0 Broncos. Clark Hunt, son of the late Lamar Hunt, the founder of this franchise. And the Chiefs rebuilt over the offseason. John Dorsey comes in as the GM. Andy Reid just before that hired as the head coach. They had six Pro Bowlers last year despite a 2-14 and 14 mark. So you knew they had some talent. The trade for Alex Smith with San Francisco with Kaepernick taking over there. Smith was available. 32 new players. 32 of the 53. There's Reid. There's John Dorsey. Longtime front office man in Green Bay. And that's how the Chiefs have gotten rebuilt in their 9-0 right now. On first down, Jamal Charles swings it to the outside. And it's a gain of about three. Andy Reid, 14 years in Philadelphia, and you could see it toward the end of last season. You knew that that was going to be it. You knew the end was near. A lot of people felt that Andy just needed some time off because of what happened in Philadelphia. Family issues, of course, with his sons and all that. Andy said he never even thought about that. He knew he loved coaching too much. He says, I love to come to work every day. There was never a moment when he thought he was going to take some time off. Second and seven. And this is Jamal Charles. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. A guy averaging almost six yards per carry. Tackled by Woodyard and Knighton. It'll be third down and six. Here we 
go. There's Von Miller on the outside, and he just jumps right inside Fisher to force that play back inside to his defense. So now, once again, the Chiefs in a third and long situation, not their strength. Four-man rush, Smith sidesteps to his left and the pass is deflected by Malik Jackson, number 97. He knocks it down. And it'll be fourth down and six, and Alex Smith has started the game one for six. On the outside one more time, Von Miller coming against Fisher. Not bad that time by Eric Fisher. So. Malik Jackson, though, one of those guys, young player, second year, that really has started to grow into his position here. Dustin Colquitt, ready to send it down toward Holiday, who juggled the last punt. This one is going to let bounce. And it's a beautiful kick that will be down at the three-yard line. An 8-18 to play in the opening quarter. 3-0 Broncos. Tomorrow, the uh, top ten take the stage live for your votes. Don't miss The Voice. It's live. It's tomorrow and Tuesday right here on NBC. City and County building. Lighted. Bronco Orange on a Sunday night. As the Broncos take over at their own three-yard line. Manning is two for his first six for 12 yards. Moreno to try to give them some breathing space and he's able to get the ball out to the six yard line. You know, there is one of the six pro bowlers from last season, Tamba Hali, with nine sacks, two return touchdowns this season, four forced fumbles, and Justin Houston on the other side with 11 sacks. So those two guys with 20 of the team's 36 sacks. And probably the weakness for the Broncos, pass blocking from their offensive tackle. So that's the matchup. Keep it on the ground again, and Moreno gets tackled up at the nine-yard line. It'll be third down and four as we approach the halfway mark of the opening quarter. Moreno has really become the trusted back for Peyton Manning, not just running the football, but pass blocking as well. Come up for the first time now in the pistol. This is the West Walker. Brandon Flowers matchup right down there. You've got to watch that one. That's always the first down play, typically. Now out of the pistol to a shotgun. And the pass is back shouldered by Wes Welker. So he beats Brandon Flowers on that play, and they pick up a first down. Well, a great job on the pick on the outside without really making contact himself. Marius Thomas was able to force Flowers out and around to get Peyton Manning just enough room to get that one in. Quick snap from the 18-yard line with Manning under center. Handing the ball to Moreno, takes it out to the 22-yard line. Well, one of the big guys inside, Dontari Poe, right here, has really become a bit of a force inside. And the remarkable part about him is he never comes off the field. I mean, this guy is just amazing at his conditioning for a guy that weighs 350, 360 pounds. Second and seven. DeVito is back in the game. He was shaking up in the last series. Nice run there by Monte Ball. He was their number one or number two draft choice out of Wisconsin. And again, we talked about Moreno before. And, you know, was Moreno going to ever emerge? And he has this year. And Wall seeing some spot duty. I don't know how he made Derek Johnson miss on that play. He couldn't have seen him and somehow reacted to that quick blitz. Third down and one. Look at the Chiefs. They're just sitting there. They are not going to react to Peyton Manning tonight. They're going to let him do all that stuff and just play their defense. And a fumble. And Kansas City has it. And this is Derek Johnson taking it inside the 20. So that KC defense, so good at forcing turnovers. Number one in the league in give-take differential, forcing one here with the fumble by Ball on a third and one. Well, Monte Ball had some fumbling issues early in the year, had not fumbled since about the second or third game. 
but gives it up big here, and that's the kind of trust I'm talking about. The guy that Peyton Manning believes in the most is no Sean Moreno. They've already, Ronnie Hillman's already been demoted for fumbling, and now Monte Ball with it back on the ground, just a miscommunication with Peyton Manning. And Peyton Manning will get credit for that tackle. From the 18-yard line, Kansas City with a golden chance. Smith with a ton of time, drops it off to the fullback. Sherman makes his second catch. The ball is out, and Denver has it. So ball fumbles, and then it comes right back to Denver with Quinton Jammer winding up with the football. So Manning right back to work. Huge break for the Broncos. The guy making a big mark, Danny Trevathan. Number 59, the linebacker, and uh, we go back to the fumble. He just flies around. He's in coverage on Jamal Charles, follows Charles to the outside, and basically gets a free shot on the ball. We have seen him make so many big plays for this defense this season, and Quinton Jammer, a big first hit, and recovered the football, but what a week it's been for Danny Trevathan. Proud Papa now as well. Wife gave birth to a baby daughter on Thursday. He was there for the celebration first half from the 16-yard line as Moreno picks up about a yard, maybe two. Justin Houston makes the tackle. And there's Danny. And let's take a look at Denor Luis Trevathan. I, I love the line he had. He, we were asking about it. He said, I was trying to keep my composure during the birth. I was I was starting to cry. And I was like, come on, man. You're a linebacker. You can't be doing this stuff. <laughs> Believe me, we've all been there, partner. Second down and eight for the Broncos from the 18-yard line. Under five to play in the opening quarter. Moreno will take the ball out to the 21. Poe making the stop there. Third down and five for Denver. You know, at least so far, you have to say this game is going Kansas City's way. You know, forget the score for a minute. Just the fact that they've been able to play with this fast-paced offense so far, usually the Broncos are rolling at this point. Yeah, the Broncos have run 17 plays for only 50 yards. This is another big third down right here. They could hold them after that turnover. And Manning going deep down. gets forced out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Demarius Thomas down the right sideline. He threw it over the rookie Marcus Cooper with the coverage on the play. And he takes the ball 69 yards. Chiefs to the love night. to play pressure on the outside, man-to-man -man across the field. And unfortunately for Marcus Cooper, he came over from the 49ers after they waved him. He has been the target for almost all offenses in the man-to-man -man coverage. You want to question Peyton Manning and his arm? No issue there. First and goal from the nine. And that's Moreno taken down by Houston. Talking about the matchups all night long, offense against defense. You go to the red zone. The Chiefs are the best in the league at stopping the opposition. The Broncos the best in the league at scoring. Scoring touchdowns on four of every five possessions in the red zone. Watch these crazy in and out routes, pick plays, all the things that they love down here in the red zone. Put your second right. Move. Get in there, come on. Holy, holy. And he's throwing on a slant caught. Julius Thomas for the touchdown. Well, that is the first tight end all season to score a touchdown against the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Their star defender, Eric Berry, against the Broncos star, Julius Thomas. And at least so far, Julius Thomas getting the better, and these receivers are as well. Well, Julius Thomas, we saw him on opening night against Baltimore, score two touchdowns. He now has 10 touchdowns this season. Matt Prater for the point after. 
And Denver able to cash in on the Kansas City fumble. Ten to nothing Broncos. Well, they have four guys do the Broncos who've scored nine or more touchdowns, and that's the tenth for him, tying Shannon Sharp. Most by a tight end in a season in Broncos history, and of course he still has a good part of the season to go. Peyton Manning, 34th touchdown pass. He is on a pace right now to break Tom Brady's mark of 50 in a season. He's on a pace to break a lot of marks. Our graphics department tonight may get worn out. Everything's a record that they do. Raiders kick off for usual results in a touchdown. Well, through his career, the magic number is 21. Blackjack. Team scoring fewer than 21 points, facing Manning 4 and 105. But if you can score 21 or more, you have a chance to win the game. But 4 and 105 if you score fewer than 21. Pretty tough, that guy. And score. The Kansas City Chiefs, I believe they've only been above 30 points once all season. And this is the first time all year they've been behind by nine or more points. So now we get to see what will happen. So far they've missed big opportunities. Couldn't take advantage of the turnover, drop passes. They've got to be better. Kevin Vickerson came across the line. Encroachment, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, there's Andy Reid. And for Andy, he he comes in, and, you know, it's funny. We saw him at the end of last year, and I think everybody thought he needed some time off. But this has certainly been a refresher for him. I think it re-energized him, and he was ready for it. And he said, when the Hunt family calls, you go. Yep. And the founding families and the league and to the outside goes Charles who gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Phillips. You know, Jamal Charles is a guy that ran 10 200 meters in the Nationals of the NCAA. And yet when you look at the linebackers, Danny Trevathan and Wesley Woodyard and Vaughn Miller, these guys can run. It, it's hard to get outside against this defense. And that's really what Jamal Charles does best. Second and eight. Smith throwing a little high and incomplete intended for Bo, but there is a flag in that area. Chris Harris with the coverage. John Parry, the referee. Prior to the pass, holding defense, number 25, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Harris. Well, Dwayne Bo does a little double movement on this back end of it. You're going to see Chris Harris grab him. So that he didn't get beat on the double move right there. At the very least, that's illegal contact, even if it's not holding. So a big break there for the Chiefs. Go to the bench for a moment. First down from the 27-yard line. Smith, two of his first seven from 19 yards. And on the ground, they've gained only four yards. Off the fake, wide open at the 40 and making the catch and taking it to the 46 is the second tight end, Sean McGrath, gain of 19. Well, one of the things they can do with Dexter McCluster is bring him back into motion into the backfield and use some things. There's the read option that Alex Smith used to run in college and just throw a couple of new looks at them. They know they want to run the football, but so far tonight the Chiefs are proving they're willing to use their running game as a way to set up their passing game. And now they look a little more settled than what they were early in this one. They had only 16 total yards in their first 12 plays. That play was good for 19. Tip caught midfield by Anthony Fasano, the number one tight end. And that'll be a gain of four yards. It was interesting talking with Alex Smith. And we said, you know, what if you have to get in a shootout with Peyton Manning? How do you think you guys will do? He said, oh, no, we haven't really been behind. We haven't had to get into a shootout. We haven't had to try and open up our offense. 
but he was pretty confident. He feels like they can throw the football against anybody, and he's no shrinking violet against this team. Well, we'll see. They haven't scored. The Chiefs have not scored an offensive touchdown in six quarters. This would be a seventh, and here goes Charles to pick up the first down. So he's able to finally get on track, takes the ball to the Denver 40-yard line, and the clock ticks down to 42 seconds remaining in the quarter. Well, it helps your pass blocking and everything else when the big guys up front get a chance to just come off the ball and block. You want to slow the pass rushers down, and nothing does that better than just running the football right up the gut. And Jamal Charles, not a big guy, but he is unafraid running inside. And Smith drops it at the 40-yard line and is able to recover it. And that will take us to the end of the quarter. So a good break there for Kansas City after they coughed it up on the last possession, and that led to a Denver touchdown. End of one. The Denver Broncos 10, the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. And Sunday night football from Denver resumes after these messages. Waiting all day for Sunday night. High above downtown Denver, Colorado, tonight's aerial coverage is brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya. In Denver, Champ Bailey. It's been a tough season for him. Started on the inactive list in the, the first several games of the year with a foot injury. Played in two games. Got hurt again in Indianapolis. Inactive again tonight. Second and ten for Kansas City as the second quarter commences with Smith throwing deep downfield and hitting Dwayne Bow at the 15-yard line for a gain of 25. I tell you, Dwayne Bowe, they told me all week because of the whatever happened in that night with the marijuana or whatever, that he had sort of refocused himself. He said he's a guy that when you get him concentrating and focused here in the slot, he is a guy that can be a game changer for us. Unfortunately, he had to get a lot of negative attention this week and probably deserved. Leading wide receiver on the team, Charles leads the team in catches. Of course, in rushing as well as he spins his way to the 12-yard line. Short gain, it'll be second down and eight. You know, it's kind of interesting talking with Andy Reid about Alex Smith, and he said, you know, we we're saying, you know, why him? Why Alex Smith? He said, I just like quarterbacks with a few calluses. And there's no doubt Alex Smith is still not happy with one. No question about it. Second and eight, that's Charles who splits out as a receiver, wide receiver to the right, and the pass is going to go to him and off his fingertips. Duki and Nacho covering him on the play. It'll be third down and eight, and then there's Joing, and a flag is thrown. So Iannaccio getting into the face of Charles, and a flag is thrown, and Smith, Alex Smith indicating it's going to go against Denver. Boy, Duke Iannaccio made a great play covering one of the fastest guys in football. And he may After have jawed his way right out of it. Sportsmanlike contact. Taunting. Defense. The 33. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Well, that turns a third down and eight into a first and goal. Here's a safety against one of the fastest guys in the league. Charles makes a nice release, barely misses it. You go back to the huddle and you say, all right, guys, let's get him on this third down. But once you get up in his face and you start banging into his helmet, there you go. Here comes the flag out there. Not going to let you do it. Can't believe it. Charles again this time splits wide to the right. And there's the Duke. He saw sort of Jack say, get him out. And he did get him out. And the pass is dropped at the five-yard line by Jamal Charles. It'll be second down and goal. Well, this was such a big game for the Kansas City Chiefs. In the first quarter, they looked like a team that hadn't been in a lot of big moments. But now here they are. They've taken Denver's best shot. They're down 10-0 on the road. And they're coming back down the field. But somebody has to start making big catches for Alex Smith. He's been throwing the ball pretty well. And they take Charles out of the game. And Miles Davis, the rookie from Arkansas, comes in at running back. He goes out into a pattern to the right. The pass is thrown over the middle and incomplete. Kayvon Webster was able to knock it down and tender for bowl to be third down and goal. 
Boy, what a nice play by the rookie, Kayvon Webster. People have picked on him all season as well. Got underneath the little pick, knocked the thing away, and sets up the third down. Big time play. From the six, Charles is back in. Iannaccio is still out. From the six yard line. Smith to the corner and it's caught for a touchdown. Dwayne Bow turning around to the outside after he crosses the goal line, pulls it in. And for the Kansas City Chiefs, they go 80 yards and 11 plays. Four runs, seven passes. Pretty physical on the tail end of this route. Let's watch it up here on top. Could have easily been called as a pass interference call on the offensive side, but one thing Dwayne Bow just does a great job of, he's so physical with defensive backs, and they felt like one of their advantages in this game was that their receivers could play more physically than could the Denver Broncos defensive backs, and you just saw it for a touchdown. Chiefs first offensive touchdown since the first half against Cleveland. It's been seven quarters since the offense got in to the end zone. Ryan suck up for the extra point. And a minute and a half into the second quarter. It's Denver 10, Kansas City 7. Thanksgiving night. That's a week from this Thursday. Extra help in the football. We will be in Baltimore. Pittsburgh Steelers trying to get on track. Big win today against Detroit. They're standing a furious first half assault by the Lions. Look at the standings in the AFC North since he wins today. And then you've got Pittsburgh and Baltimore fighting to stay alive in the playoff hunt Thanksgiving night from Maryland. Ryan Suckup, his first kickoff of the night. Eight yards in. Holiday's going to come out with it. Brendan Holiday out to the 21 yard line. It's a great game to watch tonight because of the one-on-one -on -one matchups that Kansas City, they believe in their man coverage. Wes Walker going against Brandon Flowers, and this one's been a good one all night. Then Demarius Thomas getting a little physical on the outside with Marcus Cooper to hit the big one. And then finally, Julius Thomas, the tight end against the safety, Eric Berry for the touchdown. But that's what it's going to be. There is no trick defenses out here from the Kansas City Chiefs. It's one-on-one, -on -one, it's man-to-man. -man. Let's go see who the better man is. Manning is thrown for 100 yards, 70 of those on one pass to Thomas. Great protection. And that's Demarius Thomas with a flag thrown, getting tackled by Cooper. Flag down to the 37. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, from 29. Penalty's been declined. Result of the play, first and 10. Penalty on Eric Berry. We check in with Michelle. Al, Chief starting defensive end Mike DeVito is now out with a left knee injury. You saw him come out for one play, now back in the locker room. That leaves five defensive linemen for the Chiefs. Before he went back, he was coaching up backups Anthony Toribio and rookie Mike Catapano, who will get the snaps out. All right, thank you, Michelle. And right now, Marshawn Moreno goes over the right side. Tackled by Sanders Cummings with a big hit. The rookie out of Georgia, gain of one, second down and nine. That is just a fantastic play coming off the edge for a cornerback to knock a running back down that easily. That was strong. Inside handoff over the middle, caught by Julius Thomas. First down at the 46. Funny thing, Manning talking about Thomas, and he makes a lot of mistakes, but he, he the upside is just too good to take him out of the lineup. Yeah, he said, How are you going to take out somebody who in their last game went 71 yards for a touchdown on a two yard flat pattern? And we see it all the time, these big athletic basketball player type. 
tight ends. You just throw them up, and they're too big to cover. And that's knocked down, getting an arm in there with Sean Smith to make the play intended for Eric Decker. Second and ten, Brown wants a flag and doesn't get it. Well, Peyton Manning will keep you up to date on this ankle. Watch him drive off that back foot, and remember, that's part of the problem. The ankle is on the right foot. And I haven't seen any problems whatsoever so far. Second and ten. And that pass caught on the outside. This is Demarius Thomas. And he'll take the ball all the way to the 18-yard line. Well, Demarius Thomas is going to be a physical wide receiver. He is going to get up on some of these defensive backs. And right now, because of the fact that they're not flip-flopping their corners, Peyton Manning is able to dictate who plays on whom out here. Monte Ball comes in at running back. You know, the earlier fumble. Ball makes the catch and gets hit immediately by Eric Berry. Eric Berry, again, one of the uh, pro bowlers, fourth year out of Tennessee. They picked him in the first round in 2010. And he almost always gets matched up on the tight end. Was having a great season, still is, of course. But as Chris mentioned before, it's the first time a tight end has scored a touchdown this season when Julius Thomas did it against Kansas City. Think Troy Polamalu. That's the role he has. And he said, you know, a lot of this stuff I've never done before. Last time he played linebacker was in Pee Wee football, and a lot of times he's lined up right around the line of scrimmage. As he is again. You know, Monte Ball, Manning has to push him to the left side. And then throw into traffic, and the flag comes in. And looking around was Wes Welker for the flag. He does get it. Marcus Cooper covering on the play. John Perry. Prior to the pass. Holding. Defense. Number 31. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. When they picked up Cooper, he was off to a really good start this year. San Francisco waved him. Kansas City got him and having his problems tonight. Well, for Marcus Cooper, I hate to say it, but Peyton Manning now has your number. And they missed that time a wide-open Eric Decker down the middle of the field. For whatever reason, I think he was so focused on Cooper, he just didn't see Decker in the end zone. On uh, first down, we got Moreno back in the game for a gain of two, taking the ball to the 12-yard line. Defensive coordinator, there he is, Bob Sutton. And Andy Reid said, it's the third time I went after him. I couldn't get him until now. And he's done, of course, a masterful job when you're coaching uh, the best scoring defense in the league. Yeah, Andy Reid didn't know him. John Gruden, his good friend, was in on some coaching clinics with him. And he made the recommendation, and Andy Reid's glad he did. Second down and nine. And a great protection, then dumps it off underneath. Welker makes the catch. Comes up a couple of yards short of the first down. It'll be third down and two. I tell you, the two tackles for the Denver Broncos are playing their tail off right now. Chris Clark on the outside against Tamba Ali. Ali has nine sacks on the year. On the other side, Justin Houston has 11. And so far, those guys have done nothing. This is the ninth play of the drive. Moreno setting up a first down and goal. Sean Moreno taking it to the one-yard line with 9.25 to go in the half. And you have to wonder, is this pace taking its toll? They're at altitude. Several of the Kansas City players talked about how tired they get. A first and goal, play fake, and then the pass is incomplete. But a flag is thrown. Brandon Flowers with the coverage. If it's against Kansas City, it's about a, uh, an 18-inch penalty but you keep the down pass interference defense number 24 first and goal the one yard line yeah half the distance but uh, who cares it's still first down <laughs> right or Brandon Flowers why not take a chance right here see if he hooks him a little bit coming around usually if you put that left arm around him and pull it that's what they're going to call like pretty decent defense there. This is one of those games you try to get a feel for the referees and Correction. how they're going to play. Since the previous down was started at the one yard line, the ball will be spotted at the half yard line, first and goal. Well, as we say, 18 inches on the penalty. Wait and say, yeah, quiet, quiet, quiet zone. 
the rookie ball is the running back. And there goes Ball spinning his way in for the touchdown. The rookie from Wisconsin into the end zone to culminate a 10 play 79 yard drive. What a great spin move here. This thing looks like it's going nowhere. Tamba Ali on the right just takes Joel Dreesen straight backwards and Ball just spins this thing in. Watch Ali, he just takes Dreesen backwards. But Monte Ball, no stranger to finding the end zone. He set records in the NCAA for both rushing and touchdown scored. He gets down there, he knows what to do. His second touchdown as a Denver Bronco. And Crater for the point after with 9.05. Remaining in the opening half, Denver leading the undefeated Chiefs by 10. Well, what does Coach Fox say? And we send our very best to John Fox. Underwent a heart procedure in Charlotte. It was the off week, and John was back playing golf in his hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina. At least that's where he has his home. And of course, we talked to him on the phone a couple of times this week. Uh, called into our meeting the other day and send our very best to John, who no doubt is looking on tonight. No, he happy for this point. And he wants it, everybody to know he did not turn off the game in San Diego. No. <laughs> he was fine. He was not walking away from that one for anything. And he went for a uh, he went for a walk, a mile walk on Friday. And there's uh, Robin and and John. And John wanted. It, it to be made very clear because of what happened to Gary Kubiak a couple of weeks ago in Houston and with John and there's John Elway he said it's not a stress related thing this is a congenital thing he knew he needed to have the heart procedure done he was going to have it done at the end of the season but uh, he couldn't wait obviously when he felt very faint in Charlotte that day they got him right in there and Jack Del Rio his defensive coordinator takes over. But John Elway said, no way are you coming back before a month. You sit and rest, take care of yourself, and it's the right thing to do. From the 20-yard line, and you got coming across the line, and the whistle sounds because Robert Ayers uh, might have had an unimpeded route to the quarterback had he continued to pursue that. John Perry. Unabated defense. Number... 91, five-yard penalty, first down. Unabated, unimpeded, you take your pick. Well, Jack Del Rio, and he's been in the news earlier this year as well. He's a graduate of USC. USC, of course, firing Lane Kiffin in the middle of the season. And Jack is rumored on several levels to be a guy very seriously being considered as the next head coach of the USC Trojans. He doesn't talk about it. Pat Hayden doesn't talk about it, but Jay Glazer and a few other guys do. Yeah, and USC is on a roll right now, so knocking off Stanford last night and played very well, so I'm sure that plays into that equation as well. Well, we'll see. But Jack with a lot of experience, obviously, is the longtime nine-year coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Calling the shots here, second down and two from the 28-yard line. Pass is incomplete. Talking to Del Rio the other day, we were saying, you know, if you, when you're on the sideline and you have to make a decision, do you think what would John Fox have done, or do you do it your way? And he said, no way. I, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't be in two brains at once. I just have to do what I think is best. Here's Von Miller on the outside who really made this play. Got in the throwing lanes and forced Alex Smith to just throw it away. So now your defense needs a break. You need this first down to keep this one going. Third and two. From the 28, out of the shotgun. And Smith deep down the sideline, and a flag is thrown. The pass incomplete. Dwayne Bow, the receiver, Chris Harris covering. But you saw the flag coming in. A lot of, a lot of calls against the DBs tonight. to the pass. Holding. Defense. Number 33. Five-yard penalty. 
Automatic. First down. That one was called on Duki and Nacho. Yeah, and he is on Anthony Pisano, the tight end, and it's not been a great night so far for Duki and Nacho. See, so grabbing him there, and pretty good job of acting by Anthony Fasano. Boy, this was a pretty easy catch down the field, though, by Dwayne Bow, and they just keep dropping balls tonight. And big hole over the left side. Charles exploits it. And Charles skirting the sideline, and out of bounds he goes. But you can see the reason that that guy right now would be the all-time leader in yards per carry. That's a 35-yard gain. Well, this is the old play. They use the speed and come back around. The fullback, Anthony Sherman, just stays that way. But, boy, that is a monster hole. Good job by Brandon Albert on the outside. And I tell you, when Jamal Charles gets in the open field, you can see what he's doing. See, what happens is a lot of times those pass rushers want to get up the field. So there are run opportunities inside them. Charles out for a moment. Miles Davis is in, and they give it to the rookie, Davis to the 28-yard line. Talking about Jamal Charles. Well, I tell you, when, when you're the all-time leader in yards per carry, it's pretty pretty spectacular. Mercury Morris, 5.1, third highest. And then Jim Brown, 5.2. And you know about his career, obviously. And then there's Charles at 5.5 yards per carry. Leading rusher and receiver, probably the best hands on the team. Still out, leading a breather at 5,280 feet. Smith, look out. Smith gets away and then throws, and the pass is incomplete. That was Mike Adams coming in on a safety blitz who had him but couldn't corral him. It's third down and seven. Well, one of the assets for Alex Smith is his ability to escape. And I mean, he was dead to rights on that one. Mike Adams just had him. Looked like Ben Roethlisberger spinning out of that one. And just to get this ball away keeps them on schedule and a third and manageable. Good play by Alex Smith. Charles back in the game. Come up in the pistol on third and seven. Smith over the middle and that's caught at the 20-yard line so they convert Dwayne Bowe. Snatching it at the 20 yard line. Big conversion in between Ianacho and Harris. Nice job that time by Rodney Hudson, the center. They're going to come in with a little stunt inside here, and he was right there to pick it up. And Alex Smith just hung in there. There's some of those calluses that Andy Reid were talking was talking about. Just a quarterback with a tough mindset, not giving in in this tough game so far for the Chiefs. Six and a half minutes remaining in the opening half. First down from the 20. Davis. Nice run by the Arkansas rookie to the 12 yard line. He goes. Second down at two. You know, this now Davis can run. He's a fast guy that weighs about 227 pounds and trying to figure out exactly how well he knows the offense as to how much playing time he's going to get on the outside. One of the things that the Chiefs want to do is get Eric Fisher moving some. Look how athletic he is in the open field against Vaughn Miller. That's fantastic. That is almost a strength that they're just now starting to capitalize on. Second and a short three. But just inside the 13, set up the screen. Here's Miles Davis, and Davis gets spun down at the two-yard line. Danny Trevathan saving the touchdown, but it does make it first down and goal for Kansas City. And Trevathan is down on the knee. Well, sneak the screen out here to the young rookie, and you can see some of the speed and power. Let's see if we can pick up what exactly happened to Trevathan. Just kind of spun him around. But that is a very significant player for the Denver Broncos, especially in this game, because he is the man coverage guy on Jamal Charles. So if he were to go out, it would have a significant impact on this defense. And he is the team's leading tackler as well. Steven Johnson is his backup at that spot. 
So Trevathan getting hurt as he was able to spin the ball carrier around and save a touchdown. And there is Steven Johnson, second year linebacker from Kansas. Well, time of possession is even. Denver with 203 yards and KC with 151. Ten point lead. Trevathan needs some assistance. Getting back to the Bronco bench. And when play resumes, it's first down and goal for Andy Reid, who calls the plays at the two yard line. Jamal Charles back in at running back. Charles looking for room. Still on his feet as he spun away. Looks like he got to the one and then granted a little backwards before Mike Adams makes the stop. It'll be second down and goal. Isn't it interesting that the Kansas City Chiefs trust Jamal Charles to be their goal line back? Usually this is when you get those 230 and 240 pound backs in there. But to a man, they all talk about the toughness of this guy. And you just don't take him out of the game. But there are some big guys you're running into on the goal line. Classic three down back, second down and goal from the two. And they give it to the up back, they give it to the full back. And this time it is Sherman who gets only to the one yard line. So third down and goal now from the one. Terrence Knighton with a big play here. And sometimes the fastest way to stop a ball carrier is to go for the ball. Watch Terrence Knight and grab for the ball here, and that basically stops Sherman from trying to lunge back into the end zone. Swarmed by about five orange shirts. Down to four minutes to go in the half. Third down and goal. And it's Charles, and he's going to get stopped short of the goal line. Steven Ball's Johnson, out. the ball is out as well. Denver thinks they have it. Steven Johnson, who took Trevathan's place, knocking the ball loose. Officials conferring. How about Steven Johnson coming from the back side of this and does the knee go down before this ball right. comes that, out? I think it does. That's what my they're first saying. glance, I thought it did. Yep, that's what they're saying. So but the it, ball is out, but he is down. Yeah. It could be challenged. But Del Rio, getting the word from upstairs, understands that he's not going to win it. So instead, it'll be Ryan suck up for a 20-yard field goal attempt. And that's good. But a good goal line stand by the Denver Broncos. Instead of seven, it's three. And Denver's lead is seven at 17 to 10. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Subway. Train hard, eat fresh. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. By Toyota Care and by AT&T, we think possible. That's the University of Denver's historic Chamberlain Observatory on about as clear a night as you'll ever see here in Denver. Game time temperature was 43 degrees, but you need a lot of oxygen and Sports Authority Field at mile high. Right now it's a 17 to 10 game. Good goal line stand by the Broncos because Casey had a first and goal at the two. Settle for three. Suck ups kick. Holiday takes it in the back of the end zone and they'll start from the 20 yard line. Manning back to work. 2.55 to go in the first half. Coming into the game, the only two pass rushers averaging a sack per game, Justin Houston and Tom Bahali. But so far, in my mind, it's been the offensive tackles. Orlando Franklin on the outside against Holly, And then Chris Clark takes a turn on the other side. They've been doing the job. Ryan Clady is out for the season. Their high-paid left tackle, and it has been Chris Clark who stepped in in preseason because of a shoulder injury to Clady, steps in again now, and in a big moment, having a very good night. And the Broncos begin this drive from the 20-yard line. Take to Moreno, Welker, and he gets smashed behind the line of scrimmage. Taken down by Brandon Flowers. 
Brandon Flowers is not a very big guy, but he is playing like a physical monster out here tonight. Goes right around Demarius Thomas to put a big hit on Wes Welker. Wes Welker is going to remember the name Brandon Flowers when he leaves here tonight. Flowers 5'9", 187. About Welker's size. Caught and Welker will take that one out to the 35 yard line for a first down. One of the things Peyton Manning loves to do, he's got many audibles for pick plays on the outside. This time they fake they're going to do a pick and come back inside. Brandon Flowers thought he knew what the audible was, he did not. Two minute warning in Denver. So the halftime coming up, Saints rallying in the fourth to beat the 49ers. How about the Eagles, sole possession of the NFC East League. Bob's here along with Scott Pioli. They'll weigh in on the first half. Scott, of course, uh, very instrumental in helping to build the Kansas City Chiefs. What's gone on there in the past few seasons. From the 34-yard line on first half, this is Noshan Moreno taking it up to the 37-yard line. Paul making the tackle. You know, the Kansas City Chiefs love playing that man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, but so far Peyton Manning has made them pay, so they're playing it a little softer now with the two safeties back in the middle of the field. And Manning throws, and that's caught. That'll be a first down. That is Eric Decker making his first catch of the night. It's a big-time block by Noshan Marino on Eric Berry, the blitzing inside backer slash safety. Manning going at warp speed and that pass is incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver of the Broncos, will get the second half kickoff. So in the world of Manning, what he'd love to do is lead him all the way down the field, take all of the time off the clock, and then get the ball again to start the third quarter. Which he usually does. <laughs> well, I'm going to say he's only done it about 500 times. Uh, Bob Sutton, the defensive coordinator for Kansas City, saying you have to play Peyton with no fear. Just go call your game. No fear. Second and ten. That pass. Ooh, almost intercepted instead. It winds up in the hands of Julius Thomas. The Kansas City defensive wow. backing flying in. Quentin, Quentin Dips. Dips. Took a chance, he gambled, had he gotten it, he would have had a touchdown. Quentin Demps is the leading interceptor. They had this set up perfectly. Peyton did not see it, and they just missed. Not even sure how he missed. Big play in the game. From the 40. On the ground, eight of five. This is Moreno. 14 carries for him tonight but they've kept him pretty much in check, only 39 yards. Adam Gase over on the sideline. They knew they had to run the football more tonight. They couldn't let these pass rushers get going. On second and five, Manning down the right side and off the fingertips of Demarius Thomas. Stopping the clock with 42 seconds. Broncos have two timeouts, third down and five upcoming. One of the problems with pass rushing Peyton Manning is he gets rid of the ball so fast. This is a good inside move by Justin Houston, and he still can't get there. We put the clock on Peyton Manning. On average, 2.5 seconds he's getting rid of the football. Third and five. Of course, a mile high, they are already in field goal range. Raiders hit a 54-yard run. Give the ball on the ground to Moreno. So now it's going to be fourth down. Do the Chiefs want to take their timeout here? And they do. Timeout, Kansas City. Fourth down upcoming. So Matt Prater in his seventh season, four for four this season from 50 plus, one for one tonight, all time leader in percentage of 50 yard field goals. And this one will be a 52 yarder. But because of that timeout, a miss gives the Chiefs a chance. And he is going to miss. And he's going to miss, and that's going to give Kansas City the ball at the 42-yard line with 32 seconds and two timeouts. 
Well played there by Andy Reid. You know, you get love these long field goals, but because of the rules, this isn't college. They're not going to go put it on the 20 or anything. Now you've got a shot to put points on the board just before the half. Could not have worked out any better for the Chiefs. Well, she's talking about somebody being the all-time leader in something, and you put the kibosh right on him. Yeah. No catches so far for Jamal Charles, but now if Danny Trevathan is not in there, he's in there, he's in there now. Yep. Still may want to test him here. From the 42-yard line. Alex Smith out of the gun. Deep drop, ton of time. Throws, caught, bow. And bow will get ridden down at the 42-yard line. And Kansas City will use its second timeout. 23 seconds remaining in the half. Well, I am just really impressed tonight with Alex Smith. I mean, there has been every single reason for him to think, oh, boy, it's not our night, whatever. And he is just hung in there. He is everything that Andy Reid thought he would be when he made that trade. And the protection thus far for him has been pretty darn good, too. Kind of fun to play quarterback and sit there and just look around like that. Bow four catches tonight, including one for a touchdown. Need about eight more yards to get into field goal range here. Ball is at the 42-yard line. And Peyton's over there kicking himself for leaving any time on the clock. Smith under pressure, and that's the last thing you want to do in this case. A sack. Sean Phillips is right there for the sack, taking him completely out of field goal range. And they'll stop the clock with 11 seconds. Complete coverage sack. Bo covered on the outside. Dexter McCluster inside was covered. Dominic Rogers Cromarty. They had they took away the inside, allowed the pass rush to get there. Just nowhere to go with that football. Obviously, Alex Smith would have loved to have thrown this one away. Huge. Huge sack and big mistake by Alex Smith on that one. So Kansas City had to take its final timeout. Now you have 11 seconds, but the key is if you're going to run a play, you got to get out of bounds. I doubt you can complete one in field goal range, then get down there and spike it. Possible, but not likely. Second down to 19. Big sack. Well, the coverage you usually get in these long yardage situations is some kind of two man. And Alex Smith is such a good runner. If he could run it for about 15 yards and get out of bounds, they would still have the opportunity to kick a field goal. The key is to get out of bounds at the end of the play. And Smith chased out, throwing, caught, and the, the flag is down. And the ball came out. The cluster made the catch. Lost it. Charles winds up with it. The clock showing zeros. But they're saying holding, which I've got to believe. If it's defensive, of course, the half can't end on a defensive foul, so Kansas City would have another play. Now they've got a little scuffling going on, and if you're Denver, get the heck out of there. You don't want to add anything to this. Mm -mm. Prior to the pass, being thrown, holding, defense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Automatic first down, but no time, and the half cannot end. And there is Woodyard, who's the guy who's so upset. And, of course, if he loses 15 more, that could put them in field goal range. Well, I think even here you take their shot, though. Well, you got to lose at this point. Even though there's no time on the clock, you get your one final play. So you probably... Decline that penalty, right? Wasn't it more than a five-yard gain? Well, Ryan Suckup is going to come in to attempt a field goal at least. See, this is where this decision right gets now. interesting here. I think that's what Andy's trying to figure out here, too. Right. Do I still get to kick it if I decline the penalty? Because there was more than five yards gained on that one. Mm -hmm. 
This would be a 64-yard field goal attempt if the ball is going to stay right there. Of course, Del Rio pleading his case on the other sideline. And that's exactly what Andy's going to do right now, decide whether or not <laughs> to take it or not. This would be an NFL record if this thing is made. This is one of those rare opportunities to kick a 64-yard field goal. You might have a shot at seeing history here. Well, this is the place where you do it. At altitude. And now they're gonna, now they're gonna bring them off. You know why? Because they put Dominic Rogers Cromarty back, yep. and they were more afraid of having one return the distance as opposed to making that kick, so they'll take their chances with a Hail Mary here. We've seen it happen. And don't be surprised if they go hard count here, too, try and steal five yards and then kick the field goal. Line of scrimmage is the 46. It's first down. And untimed it down because of the penalty. Smith will take the snap out of the shotgun. And Smith, well, he's going to stay in bounds as long as he can, but he finally has to run out of room and step away, and that's going to take us to halftime. Denver leading 17 to 10 with the Toyota halftime show coming up on the other side of this break. Kansas City coming in undefeated. Denver coming in 8-1, 17-10. Broncos leading as we start the third quarter. Great matchup. You have the number one scoring offense, Denver. Number one scoring defense, Kansas City. Great individual matchups. What's captured your fancy? Well, for me, there's been a lot of things. But uh, for the Burger King inside edge, we're going to do a little Brandon Flowers and Wes Welker. Two feisty guys in the slot all night long have been just going at it. Brandon Flowers set the tone early on with some of these physical plays. Every time Wes Welker would turn his back, he was on his back. Big hit there as well, but Wes Welker did have five catches. A couple of big ones. Good recovery on this one by Flowers as well. This is a big first down picked up by Wes Welker. Just been going back and forth all night long between these two been fun to watch just like this first half and that's our Burger King inside edge check out more insights from tonight on NBC Sports Live Extra can't wait to watch the second half second half about to begin with Denver receiving the kick Look at Brandon Flowers and he'll go to work immediately as will Welker and Peyton Manning Again, the importance of this game when you think about the division, the winner of this division at the moment would figure to be the number one seed. And even if the team that finishes second in the division has the second best record in the conference, you go all the way down to the number five seed. And these same two teams will meet again in Kansas City in two weeks. Second half kickoff. And Holiday lets it go through the end zone, and we go to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle. Well, just spoke with Jack Del Rio, and he told me his offense is executing beautifully. He said the Chiefs have a good pass rush, but we have a good plan. And he said, I don't think Peyton's been hit once, has he? Meanwhile, Raheem Moore for the defense is in the locker room still. Jack Del Rio told me he's not wearing his pads and is very doubtful for the second half, but they don't know what it is other than a mystery injury to the lower leg, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. So Moore is out. You look at Andy Reid, his team has given up 249 yards to the Broncos. So this great defense, number one in scoring, on a pace to allow 500 yards to Denver tonight. From the 20-yard line. And he's throwing, and it's incomplete. A little overthrown. Eric Berry going to the ground. First half numbers as we take a look at the passing yardage. Denver with 202. And the total yardage uh, belonging to Denver, that discrepancy right there. The turnovers, one each, and they came back-to-back -back in the first quarter. And that second one by Kansas City after a Denver turnover led to a Denver touchdown. No Sean Moreno. It's thrown down. So Moreno's carried the ball a lot tonight, but KC has 
done good work on him. 15 carries for 40 yards. Don Tari Poe just watch the big guy inside here. You just can't move him. He has just proven to me that you know he is no workout warrior. A lot of people felt he came out of the combine. People didn't know who he was. He played at Memphis State. They'd only won five games in three years. But he has proven in the National Football League he can play with anybody. And his growth this season is a big reason why this defense has taken off. 11th overall pick in the draft last year. Third down to nine. And turning around and it's incomplete. Julius Thomas had to look back. Couldn't corral it. So it's fourth down and a three and out. Absolutely perfect throw by Peyton Manning. It looked like Julius Thomas was going to turn around on this back shoulder at the right moment. Kind of caught his hands, but just couldn't hang on to that one. Could only get one hand back, but it was the spot it needed to be. Britton Colquitt will send it down toward Dexter McCluster. An angled kick. McCluster has to come to the near sideline, corrals it at the 33-yard line, and then gets taken down from behind at the 37-yard line by David Bruton. Can we just say what a big stop that was for the Kansas City Chiefs to come out with that kind of a stand? Downfield passing through week 10. You can see a lot of the, the short stuff, the West Coast offense. Over three quarters of his passes thrown within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. And only 5% of his passes to targets more than 20 yards. And there's the passing by distance tonight for Alex Smith. Taking a, a few more shots deeper. They have not been shy tonight. I'll give them credit. They've taken their shots. From the 37-yard line on first down. And downfield again. That's tip and incomplete. Malik Jackson got a hand on it. He'll make it second down and 10. Now you mentioned the West Coast offense, but Andy Reid said now that they're in Kansas City, the name's changed. Farmland Fury is the name <laughs> of this offense now. You know, Andy, he's been through a lot, let's face it. But here's a guy that is just kind of a joy to be around, isn't he? And you bet. Clark Hunt, that's what he said. He said, the first time I met him, I really didn't know him, but he was just so much fun to be around. West Coast of the Missouri River, second and ten. Still to keep it. Andy, very self-deprecating guy. Very even keel through the years. And look, it, it just all it took in Philadelphia for him to be the all-time hero would be one time to take the Lombardi trophy down Broad Street. He just couldn't get there. He got close. Won a championship game appearances, one Super Bowl appearance, and lost to New England. And on to Kansas City where he's 9-0. Third down and seven now from the 40. Jamal Charles, Dexter McCluster on the same side, creating some good matchups down here. And Smith taking a shot deep and incomplete. The coverage is perfect that time. Mike Adams on Dexter McCluster, so it's fourth down. Oh, what a great job of coverage by Mike Adams here. I mean, this is a dream matchup against the very quick Dexter McCluster against the safety, and he was all over it. Huge play. It's Trenton Holiday setting up at his own 10-yard line. The punting game tonight, it's all Colquitt all the time. The two brothers. This is Dustin. Holiday camping underneath, now he's going to let it go, and it will bound into the end zone. So each team with one possession, a quick one. Manning back to work for the 20-yard line, Denver up by a touchdown. A little bit of mystery theater in regard to Peyton Manning and how he would perform with the high ankle sprain, and pretty good so far tonight. Yeah, you see all the uh, bandages on there, but this first throw here, told me all I needed to know. When you can sort of pivot on that bad ankle and make that throw and not wince afterwards, you know that it's feeling pretty good. I haven't seen any sign. He's been driving off that bat, back leg, but he hasn't been hit either. That's the big surprise. I thought the Chiefs would really send the house on occasion just to make sure they got a few hits on him. 
first down. It is Moreno. A good run this time out to the 29-yard line. Eight of nine. Second and one. Justin Houston making the tackle. Uh, and, and that's the problem, you know, that when you allow this offense to get going like this and you're probably just not as fresh as you are used to being in the game. Quickly to the line, quickly snap, Moreno again. Moreno, the workhorse, seeing more and more action as the season goes on. He's carried 18 times tonight, 54 yards. Watching he and Peyton work on their passing game. Drive again to the outside and it gets banged down after a gain of about two by Marcus Cooper. Yeah. One of the things we always talk about these outside pass rushers, but maybe their biggest job is they've got to get up here and try and set the edge hard on the outside. So Justin Houston, all the numbers that he puts up as a pass rusher, pretty good all-around player. Monte Ball on the game, and that pass is knocked down by Justin Houston. Speaking of, he almost yeah. got that one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He was just sitting there reading Peyton's eyes, and I think if he put up the other hand, he might have had an interception on this one. Sometimes you just have to get lucky on those tip balls. So third down and nine. Drifting left, Manning throws, open, Welker, flag down. Two flags back at the 28-yard line. Holding, offense, number 74, 10-yard penalty, replay, third down. The right tackle, Orlando Franklin, and that will uh, negate a 19-yard gain. He just got caught on the inside stunt and the outside move by Derek Johnson. He had to stick out his arm and just hook him. You just have to sometimes realize that Peyton Manning, being Peyton Manning, can take care of you. If you make a mistake, by the time they do all that looping and stunning, remember the clock we were talking about? About two and a half seconds. By the time you do that, Peyton Manning's gotten rid of it. That was a big penalty. Third and 19, Peyton saying to us the other day, you know, sometimes on, in situations like this, you just take your medicine. On third and 19, this is where you might take your medicine. And Peyton will throw one underneath, and that's knocked down by Poe. So it'll be fourth down. Yeah. Don Tari Poe almost took his medicine on that yeah. one. That's a couple of balls now. Poe's right over the center here. And as we're seeing more and more of around the National Football League, if they don't get there on the first move, especially playing against Peyton and how quickly he gets rid of the football, just try and knock it down. For Britton Poe quick, this will be his third punt of the night. Fielded at the 29 by McCluster. And he gets thrown back by Virgil Green after a six yard return. Early third, it remains 17 to 10 Broncos. Manning Brady 14. I can't believe it. Here we are in 2013, and we're still looking at Manning and Brady, and we're still looking at Two guys very much at the top of their game. As Kansas City on first down goes nowhere with Charles tackled to the line of scrimmage. I mean, this has been going on for over a decade, and you would think at some point, okay, we're tired of it. But now it's like it's as big as ever, Manning against Brady for the 14th time, counting postseason next week. And what's remarkable is that these two guys have been able to keep their teams on top almost no matter what. You know, a lot of changes on both teams obviously Peyton changing teams and yet all they do is just keep winning that's just how great they are that's Sunday night next week from Foxborough and that pass is caught by Sean McGrath the tight end and McGrath will pick up a first down taking the ball into Bronco territory sometimes inside linebackers work so hard on the other side that they can lose a route that comes back the other way. So you get focused in on that linebacker, and then here comes the other one underneath. 
But I have to say, I have been so impressed with the Kansas City Chiefs tonight. I don't think I was a true believer. I knew they had a good defense, but I didn't know if their offense could sort of match and play with Peyton Manning. They have been just a couple of big catches away from having the lead in this game. That was a 21-yard gain. Give the ball to Charles, exploits a hole through the middle and makes his way to the 32-yard line. Chris, I think a lot of people with a flag down now at the end of the play were diminishing Kansas City's accomplishments because they have played the softest schedule in the league. Von Miller is the injured Bronco. And we'll get the the penalty call as well. They're already minus, or the Broncos, Raheem Moore, their safety. Here's Barry. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 17, 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. That's the receiver, the wide out, Donnie Avery. That hurts, but what hurts even more if you're thinking about Von Miller's injury, that is about as big as it gets. I tell you, since he's come back in the lineup, this defense and quarterback ratings against them and the pressure that he's been able to get, he's changed this defense, although tonight he's been handled. Tonight it has been the Eric Fisher story so far on Von Miller. Watch the hands of Eric Fisher. The big thing that they've tried to teach him since he got here is how to extend those hands and use his athleticism to stay within. He was trying to keep his hands low and he was trying to corral guys and grab them. He is a work in progress, but tonight, pretty darn good. First and 13 after the penalty, and that's tip and incomplete. Sean Phillips got a hand on it. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Eric Fisher told me this has been the most amazing year of his life. He saw his draft stock rise from a top 15 pick in the Senior Bowl to a top 10 pick after the Combine to the number one overall pick. And the expectations that came along with being the top pick overwhelmed him early on, he told me. He finally had to just throw those expectations out the window and just play, Al. And he has. He's a, a guy out of Central Michigan, 6'7", 306. It's never a sexy pick when you have the number one pick and you pick a tackle, but they knew what they needed. Second and 13. And Smith is going to go down, and that's Derek Wolf. He beats Fisher. Uh, and he knows it. He got so far forward here. Watch Wolf out here. Fisher tries to overextend. Wolf uses his own momentum against him and gets the sack. So go figure. You take out Von Miller after the injury, and it's Derek Wolf that comes up and beats the guy that Von Miller hasn't been able to beat all night. And we put the kibosh on him. Sure did. Von Miller's back in the game. It's third down and 27. Speaking of taking your medicine. Smith underneath the cluster. That's when you just want to hold on to the ball, and he does at the 45-yard line, and in comes the punting unit. You know what's interesting? We were talking to a bunch of the defenders of the Denver Broncos, and very quietly they were like, you know, there's two defenses playing in this game out here you know, on Sunday night. Let's, let's not forget that. And they had a little chip on their shoulder coming in here with all the attention that the Chiefs defense was getting. They felt like that uh, maybe they could get their due in this one. Dustin Colquitt averaging 52 yards a punt tonight. This is his fifth. And it will bound through the end zone. 8.06 remaining in the third quarter with the Broncos on top 17 to 10. Tonight football being brought to you by Burger King or Taste is King. By Moto X, designed by you, assembled in the USA. By Sears, there's a better way to save. Sears, where better happens. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. Friday night, Battle Christian advanced to the Colorado State semifinals. 49-13 win. Christian McCaffrey, four touchdowns. And if that last name sounds familiar, there's Ed McCaffrey. Long-time wide receiver for the Broncos. Pretty proud of his... Young boy with four touchdowns the other night. Okay. Here's Manning throwing on first down, and it's a nine-yard gain as Eric Decker gets forced out of bounds. 
at the 29 yard line by Marcus Cooper. Yeah, and uh, Peyton Manning is saying, all right, let's get back to what was working. Remember in the first half, we were throwing the ball at Marcus Cooper a lot. Here he comes out on that drive and sets up a second and short. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> back to the ground. And this is Bull picking up two, and that's enough for a first down. Denver Broncos on record setting pace 41 points per game 458 yards per game and right now with 17 through two and a half quarters 17 points Chiefs have not allowed more than 17 points in any game this season Manning and pressure was put on got the throw away Justin Houston came in to put the heat on it's second down and ten now, right now, it's Chris Clark who's doing a good job on Tom Bahali and Orlando Franklin struggling a bit on the other side. That time got pushed right back in by Justin Houston, and that's really what forced the incompletion. Ball again, the Wisconsin rookie. Short game. And there's Alan Bailey in there to make the tackle. Remember, he's probably taking over for Mike DeVito who got hurt early in the first quarter. Up to the line quickly, third down and seven. <laughs> Pressure again, and the pass is incomplete. Coming quickly through Eric Berry that time on a blitz. Unblocked, came through, forced the issue on Manning and it's fourth down. We talked about Eric Berry as an inside backer in some of the diamond quarter packages. That time his speed able to get there. And Julius Thomas took a knock on the outside in that trap coverage from Marcus Cooper. And he's down. Julius Thomas is down on the turf. But there's Eric Berry. At so Tennessee two-time. Pro Bowler last year went to Honolulu, but uh, right now the concern is about the tight end Thomas. Right at the tail end of that thing, Marcus Cooper came in. Oh my goodness! And you can see that knee hyperextend and go backwards. That was the coverage where basically you think you have a tight end and man coverage, and he's wide open, but the corner stops, and everybody, including Peyton Manning, maybe a little. Sigh of relief seeing that big guy walk off. Thomas hadn't played much the first two years here and then got the start on opening night, scoring two touchdowns, one tonight, ten on the season. And on fourth down, the punt with McCluster back to receive Colquitt's kick. I tell you, the Kansas City Chiefs and their special team sometimes have a way of taking over games. Not yet. McCluster's dangerous, though. Very. Good deep kick, and the cluster will field it in the 13 and get taken down immediately. Beautiful tackle by Andre Coldwell. Be the number four or five wide receiver with the gunner on the punt team. Beautiful play. This week on the Tonight Show, well, former President Bush will be there. And Blake Shelton as well, heading out to Burbank. That's on the Tonight Show. This week on NBC. Back to Denver. Cool, crisp, clear night. 17-10, Denver on top. As Kansas City begins this drive from its 13-yard line. Good play fake. Good protection. Deep downfield and then broken up at the 40-yard line. Intended for Avery. Broken up by Dominique rogers Cromarty. And remember, Andy Reid had him in Philadelphia. They felt like sometimes when their play action goes away, that sometimes Dominic Rogers Cromarty has a way of going to sleep a little bit and just relaxing on the backside of plays. That time they motion away, come back and throw it back, and he was up to the task. Athletically, physically, just such a gifted guy. Player of the week earlier this year for his big game against the Washington Redskins in the AFC. Big addition. Second and ten. Jamal Charles. That's one thing I, I never knew. Longest full name in NFL history, Dominique Rogers Cromarty. 
That's it. Well, there is Brad Childress, who has a, been a head coach, of course, in the league in Minnesota. He is the uh, spread game analyst slash special projects. And Andy gives him special projects every week, so he's not a coach who's down in the field. DRC was was the special project this week. Didn't work out so far. Third and seven. And it's incomplete, so Alex Smith can't get anything happening. Intended for Bo, covered there by Woodyard, fourth down. Pretty good job there by Wesley Woodyard coming across, and I think Andy Reid saying, wait a minute now. Either that ball was in the air or he was beyond five yards or something. Something wasn't right with that. It was a good play by Woodyard. It's become a punting duel now in the second half. Dustin Colquitt, this will be his sixth punt of the game. His brother has launched four from the other side. Holiday. From the 32. Can go next to nowhere. With 524 remaining. Thus far, the third quarter has been scoreless. Still 17 to 10. He reads not happy even a little bit. He feels like Wesley Woodyard got away with a hold. Top of the screen, Dwayne Bowe is going to come right across here. And if he gets across the face of Woodyard, it's a lot of green grass. Sort of grasped around the waist. And he took immediately after the referee without satisfaction. Well, Julius Thomas is back in the game. He was shaken up the last time Denver had the ball. They start this drive from their own 35-yard line. And here's Moreno. And Moreno is a good tough running, picks up a first down. That's his longest run of the night, good for 11 yards. He's already carried the ball 20 times tonight for 66 yards. Each team in this half has had three possessions, and they've all ended with punts. No gain for Moreno, second and ten. Sometimes you just have to stack it up from the outside in and force that tight end back. It sort of knocks the pulling guard off, and now you're starting to see a few run stunts coming from the Kansas City Chiefs as well. Four and a half to go in the third quarter. Manning to the outside. Welker makes the catch and gets banged down as he hauls it in by Quentin Depps along the sideline. Gain of seven. It'll be third down and three for Denver. That was almost a blown coverage there. Brandon Flowers really just stopped covering Wes Welker. And it's a good thing Demps covered for him because that definitely would have been an easy one or even a big play. Manning now 16 of 29 for 218. And third and three. Kelly out of the play. Gives him time to hit Decker. Eric Decker inside the 20 to the 14 yard line. 33 yard gain for Decker. First of all, you have to start with the protection. You know Tom Bahali is coming around the corner, so Peyton Manning does a little backpedal away from that side and buys just enough time to catch the crosser. A little pick play going across the middle. Decker with nobody in sight. And a ton of yardage after the catcher category that Denver leads the league in. First and ten. A little floater caught by Ball. And Ball gets taken down by Eric Berry. Gain of six, second down and four. Well, it's just man coverage on the outside, and I think this is Justin Houston just thinks it's a run, jumps up, and there's nobody to come out in the play in the flat to take Monte Ball. 240 left in the quarter. Second down and four from the eight. Inside give to the outside. Four. Touchdown. Oh. 
A little mile-high leap for Ball, who gets into the end zone for the second time tonight. There we go. Zane Beatles out and around and able to secure the edge. Derek Johnson couldn't get there. Marcus Cooper was in man coverage, and Monte Ball, despite having the fumble early in the game with the miscommunication, Jack Del Rio showing a lot of confidence in the high draft pick and giving him other chances, and he has delivered. The flags come in here as Monte Ball has his second touchdown of the night, his third of his young well, career. In formation prior to the snap, defense, that penalty will be assessed on the ensuing kickoff. Not too many men on the field, 222 left, extra point. To come, Kansas City for the first time this season has allowed more than 17 points in a game. And they've had their opportunities. You know, they stopped this Broncos offense, what, three times in a row, and their offense just could not answer the other way. Prater converts. Late in the third quarter, 24-10. You know, you look at the importance of this game when we talk about the division winner figures to be the number one seed. And whoever finishes second is going to probably be the number five seed. And there's a huge difference there, of course. But to me, this game was so much more important for Denver because Kansas City would have a two-game lead if they win the game. Denver goes to New England next week. Take a look at the remaining schedules. Chiefs get San Diego at home. Then they get Denver and Arrowhead. And then at Washington, at, o at Oakland, Indy, and at San Diego, the Broncos, two tough ones coming up. And then the schedule softens a bit. But uh, the Broncos, if they lose this game, would need help in securing the number one seed. Otherwise, now it'll be back in their own hands if they win this game. Yeah, and they're hoping Tom Brady can give them a little help next week in New England as well. And then Denver has to come back to Kansas City and, and, you know, going into this, I, I didn't know how this team would match up. I didn't know if they'd have the ability to sort of hang with them. But defensively tonight, they've proven that they can play with Peyton Manning. Now you add the crowd noise to help the pass rushers when they get back to Kansas City. Could very easily be a very different outcome there. Of course, this one's a long way from over. Yep. But now you have that scenario that we talked about. Now Alex Smith, who would prefer to play it a little bit close to the vest and not take a lot of chances and rely on the defense, too late for that now. Now you have to go. Now you have to make some big plays in the passing game. Prater's kick. And this is going to be taken seven yards in. This is Nile Davis. They send the rookie back there to return the kick. Davis around the outside. And a flag is down as he gets forced out of bounds up at the 27-yard line. Boy, I tell you, for this offense, this is a killer penalty. Holding number 32, return team. Half the distance, first and 10. And Kansas City. Cyrus Gray. You know, just the lead back coming right up. You see Cyrus Gray right there, and there's the hook of the arm right in that area there. But now you put your offense back inside the 10-yard line, an offense that has trouble going the distance anyway, and now you're, the crowd gets amped up. You're right back into that part of the stadium. You have to be disciplined here, but you also can't play it tight to the vest. You've got to start opening up this offense. This is a dangerous time now for Alex Smith. And they've done nothing, have the Chiefs offensively in this half. Three possessions and a total of 26 yards gained. Smith slings it to the outside. This is Dextra McCluster. Takes it up to the 14-yard line. Tackled there by Kayvon Webster. Yeah, and it's one thing we haven't seen much of tonight. Jamal Charles and Dexter McCluster, two of the most dynamic players in the game when they get in the open field. And throughout the course of the season, they've thrown a lot of passes to Jamal Charles. Now, a lot of them short, dinky passes, but sometimes you have to give your best playmaker a chance to win some one-on-one -on -one battles. Charles has not caught a pass tonight. And this time it is Alex Smith faking the handoff, and he can run. 
Kayvon Webster finally stops him. And uh, don't the New Orleans Saints know that all too well? Alex Smith running as he did in that playoff game to lead the 49ers to a huge win two years ago. Well, once the defensive end, in this case outside linebacker Vaughn Miller, commits down, then the quarterback just simply makes that read and he's gone. That play has been there on several occasions. One time earlier they ran it when it wasn't there. From the 31-yard line. Give it to Charles. Then he's done a good job bottling Charles up tonight. Charles has now carried the ball 14 times for 68 yards, but 35 of those 68 yards came on one carry. But that's when he's so dangerous, you know? I mean, here's a guy, he's so fast, he can start from where the right tackle is and end up breaking outside the left tackle. So that's the problem you have if you try and pursue too hard from the backside. Closing minute of the third quarter, second and five. Charles again. Around the right side, picks up the first down. Tackled by Duke Iannaccio. And the end of the quarter. Isn't it interesting, though, that here they, here they were that, you know, we're thinking, boy, they've got to get to their passing game. What have they done? Run, run, run down the field. And that's really who they are. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. So Kansas City on the move, down by two touchdowns. End of three. Denver 24, KC 10. And Sunday Night Football back after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. As you look at downtown Denver, Colorado State Capitol. On a sparkling and cool Sunday night. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoya. Back in Sports Authority Field. We start the fourth quarter. Denver up by two touchdowns. But Kansas City, good looking drive. Then the third. And they begin the fourth with a first down at the 45 yard line. And nothing happening on the inside handoff here to Jamal Charles. Malik Jackson's had a nice night right there to stop him, second down. You know, the one team to beat Denver this year was the Indianapolis Colts, and they did it by sticking to the run even when it was sort of uncomfortable to stick to the run. Uh, unfortunately, those one-yard first down runs kind of changes the complexion of things. Smith out of the pistol on a second and nine. Throws, and it's caught by the cluster on the run, and up for a first down before he strides out of bounds. I'll tell you what, this is a gutsy throw by Alex Smith. Watch the hit he takes as soon as this ball comes out of his hands, but he did not flinch on the throw. Throws it all the way back across the grain. Knew he's going to take one right in the chops there by Malik Jackson. That's a big first down. Jackson's going all over the place. Kansas City, this drive began back at their own eight. Running back now is the rookie Davis. Give it to him. Gain of three to the 41. There's Doug Peterson, the offensive coordinator, and he's a guy that played quarterback for Andy Reid in Green Bay. He also followed him on to Philadelphia, ends up as the offensive coordinator here, and he says, I try to see this game through Alex Smith's eyes. He said, I've stood in the pocket. I've been under the pass rush. I understand what he's going through as a quarterback in this offense, and I think it certainly has helped him. But backed up Brett Farr for another season's in Green Bay, second and seven. Smith rolling, and he's going to run, and you know he can run, and he slides to a stop at the 31, but a penalty marker. Back at the 50-yard line, and it's going to come back. Holding offense, number 84, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Tight end Sean McGrath. And this hurts because I think Alex Smith was going to outrun this one anyway. Here he is right here. And you'll see him just grab a little jersey and nice job there by the veteran Sean Phillips throwing his hands in the air and saying, come on, ref, throw it. Back to the 49-yard line, second down and 17. And there's Phillips who needs attention on the Denver sideline. 
Robert Ayers takes his spot, number 91. That's Trevathan on the outside against Jamal Charles all the way at the top. Oh, the slot man, the cluster is incomplete. Quinton Jammer with the coverage. It'll be third down and 17. This is just a bad play, in my opinion, by Alex Smith. You got one on one with your guy, one of the fastest guys in football, against a linebacker. You have to take that shot every time. No matter what else is happening on the field, when you see that, you've got to try it. on the sideline on third and 17. Fake to Davis. Screen set up. That's caught the sound of the tight end. It gets banged down to the 41 yard line. Hit hard by Chris Harris. Now it's fourth and seven. I tell you, this has been some of the biggest hits by defensive backs I've seen in a game all season this year. These guys have just laid the wood to some big tight end types. Chris Harris there, we've seen Dukey and Nacho. These are some pretty good shots right there. But regardless, Al, that was a successful drive by the Kansas City Chiefs to come off their goal line and now hopefully punt it down inside the 10 or maybe even inside the 5 and let this defense go to work. Wes Welker drops back to receive Colquitt's kick. going to let it go and it bounds into the end zone with 11 minutes and 48 seconds left in the fourth and the Broncos on top 24 10 in Denver. Tonight football being brought to you by Best Buy your ultimate holiday showroom by Mercedes-Benz and the all-new CLA by out of the furnace sometimes your battles choose you December the 6th and by Bud Light official beer sponsor of the NFL. The Malibu Kelly Hayes, who lives in Aspen, was telling me that the snow up there is great. Perfect is what he told me. Unbelievable. Flawless. There it is. Sparkling. Mayor Hayes, sir. <laughs> From the 20-yard line, the Broncos start this drive with a two-yard run by Monte Ball. Justin Houston makes the tackle. Second and eight. It's kind of interesting talking to Peyton about his sort of change in routine this year. Going to bed now at 9 o'clock, multitasking, watching film while he's in the cold tent now on his iPad. Kind of an interesting technological process that he's going through. In the rocking chair, <laughs> puppy at his feet, slippers on, Walker makes the catch, all the way out to the 41-yard line. And the ball is loose. Wes Walker down the... Broncos are saying he was down. Nothing yet from the officials. Walker's going to come out of there with it, too. Yep. Boy, that has been will. some matchup between he and Brandon Flowers all night long. All that pushing and shoving and stuff, and this time Walker went patting a little outcut, and then Flowers slips down, and it was on after that. Pretty remarkable, isn't it? That guy that undrafted. Very close. And meanwhile, Welker, Welker needs some attention for the injury timeout here. So Andy Reid has the challenge flag. The question is, was it a fumble? But more importantly, even if it was, who recovered it? There has to be a clear recovery. And he's going to put the challenge flag away because Welker actually came out of that pile with the ball. He may not have been down before the ball came out. And it looked like Derek Johnson had it for just a second, but Welker came out of the pile with it. So Reed puts the challenge flag away. And play resumes now from the 42-yard line. On first down, ball for a couple. Let's go back and look at the Welker play. The ball is going to come out and start moving right here. That ball is on the move, and he never really gains control. So that's a fumble in my mind. 
Derek Johnson now is going to pick it up. He has both hands on the ball, but right there when his knee goes down, we can't really tell who has the ball because ultimately Wes Welker comes out of there with it. Now, how he did that, I have no idea. And he got hurt on the play and needed some time and back on the bench, second down and seven. Manning over the middle. Becker gets free for a big gain into Chiefs territory. This is just what makes playing against Peyton Manning in this offense so hard because you get these pick plays going. And in man coverage, when you have to run behind the guy coming across the field, you want to say it's just not fair. There's just no way to cover him. But he gets the ball out so quickly, and that happens so fast, it's just almost impossible to cover. Gain of 17. Decker's caught four for 67 tonight. Starting to come up in some pressure sets now. the sideline a little too far for Andre Caldwell first time he's been targeted tonight he made a great special teams play before second and ten the Broncos 115 points in the fourth quarter of this season and the the Chiefs have allowed only 17 well we are right on the fringe here of field goal territory and a field goal here makes it Three score game. Walker is back in. Second and ten. And Manning will throw. Ball makes the catch, breaks the tackle, gets a first down. And it'll chew up some clock here. Kendrick Lewis makes the stop under nine minutes to play. Now coming off the edge. There's Orlando Franklin getting it done again, but this has been a bit of a coming out party for Monte Ball tonight, not just with his red zone stuff, but now as a receiver as well. In a big game. And Manning, he's so masterful at this. No huddle, but he knows it's time to chew up the clock, so he takes the play clock all the way to one. And Monte Ball picks up a yard. Just took 40 seconds off the clock. Yeah, and really it's been interesting for me to watch. So many defenses try and match everything Peyton's doing. Every audible, they'll move, they'll shift. The Kansas City Chiefs, they've sat in their defense, and you can do whatever you want as long as you want, and they haven't reacted to it at all. And really had a good game tonight against this high-scoring offense. Manning 21-35 now, Peyton 3 5 Inside play fake, and then the pass is incomplete, intended for Demarius Thomas. It'll be third down and nine. Well, the one thing about Peyton tonight, if ever protection was hugely important with that high ankle sprain, tonight would be the night. Look at that. No sacks, been hit twice, hasn't been knocked down at all. They've done the job, the offensive line. and Walker's going to get hot tied before he can get the first down. Out of bounds of the 18, Brandon Flowers. And now Manning looking over to the bench saying, let's go for it, fourth and one. No way. No way you go for this. Maybe you try and draw him off sides here. But you have to make this a three-score game, don't you? You would think, but you know, I wonder if Del Rio's having a mind meld with John Fox. Uh, John Fox might be having a mind meld of his own right now. Foxy, what are you thinking back there? No way. You're right. Timeout. No way. And it's exactly right. This is when you have to just do the math. It's a three, three possession game that's in play here. It's fourth down and one. Manning's going to come over for the moment. They still haven't sent out the field goal group. Now we're going to see Peyton next week. 
it's going to be in Foxborough as the field goal unit does come out now. Manning Brady, it's the Patriots and the Broncos. It's Sunday night football. All getting underway with football night in America at 7 Eastern time. So now Prater will come out. <laughs> Would have died to know what John Fox was thinking. Right <laughs> I guarantee you. He had the clicker and he was thinking about going to some soap opera somewhere. Yep. 36 yard field goal attempt trying to make it a 17 point game. Britton Cole quick to do the holding. And the kick is good. He kicked a screwball through the upright. 7.06 to go in the fourth. Denver 27 and Kansas City 10. Saturday, the home finale for the Fighting Irish. Notre Dame taking on Brigham Young. 3.30 Eastern time right here on NBC. 5,280 feet up, are we? What does Coach Fox say? This is I'm enjoying this at the moment. Up by 17. And just another touchdown. <laughs> 7.06 left. Kansas City down by 17. Trying to stay unbeaten. Download NFL Mobile and get live premium content like Sunday Night Football on your smartphone. Call Star Star NFL to download or go to NFL.com slash mobile to learn more. Well, let's see if Kansas City can muster something and do it in a hurry. They start from the 20-yard line. Four receivers go to the left and you got action on the left side. You had movement in the slot by Donnie Avery. John Perry said a, a busy night tonight. At 15 accepted penalties in the game. Delay a game defense number 36 who was lined up within one yard of the line of scrimmage made an action that created the false start. Five yard penalty, first down. It's Kayvon Webster and it uh, forced Avery to move. Quarterback in Harrison tonight. Manning has not been on the ground. 314 yards for him. And for Alex Smith, taking his shots, had some chances, but I'll tell you what, you go back to that Sherman fumble after the Denver turnover in the first quarter. That was a big play. First and five. Knocked down. At the line of scrimmage, Sean Phillips. Longtime San Diego Charger picked him up in free agency and in his 10th year in the league having a great year. No doubt about it, Al. He was the guy when Von Miller was out and they were got a little injury on John awesome walk coming off but it was Phillips who came over and without Von Miller they really needed to have somebody step up and get some pressure seven and a half sacks that he's been able to take the place basically of Elvis Dumerville who left of course and it has eight and a half sacks now with the Ravens or did coming in second and five Smith will throw and the pass is incomplete and big forward Wayne Bow covered there by Rogers Cromartie, third and five. But I go back to the first quarter of this game, and you know, the, the first time they had the penalty right off the bat, the kind of nervous start, they dropped some balls, the fumble you talked about. I thought there was an opportunity for Kansas City in this one to really jump out and play even with the Broncos, and really that first quarter has been the difference in this one. The first quarter ended with a 10 to nothing Denver margin. Third and five to try to keep the drive alive, and they do. Fasano makes the catch, so the tight end out to the 37 yard line to move the chains, and we're down to 645 left in regulation. Uh, they're letting uh, Jeff Schwartz, who's come in for Awesome Watt, right guard off the hook. They are not pressuring him at all. I think. I may try a blitz or two right over number 74 and see if I couldn't take advantage of this. Chiefs five wide. 
Hamlin to the outside, and it's knocked away, intended for Mo and Quentin Jammer, the longtime Charger, is there in his 12th year in the league. And it's Quentin Jammer that came up with the initial hit that caused the fumble on the outside here. He's been a good one for a long time for the Kansas City Chiefs and hasn't gotten a lot of chances to play this year, but when he has, he's been able to take advantage of it. Good to have those kind of vets around late in the year for these big games. John Elway, another veteran pickup. Jammer and Phillips, two longtime San Diego Chargers, both playing well here. Second down and 10. Smith guns it, caught to the 42-yard line. Donnie Avery, but a penalty. And I thought somebody grabbed Avery just as he was making his break there. Flag Ben Jammer. Yeah, flag right along the sideline, right in front of the Kansas City bench. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 20, 15 yards from the end of the play. First and 10, Kansas City. That's Mike Adams. Mike Adams had a big role without Raheem Moore in there, and really he's done some nice things in man coverage. And that's Vaughn Miller going off again here, back to the Denver sideline. That personal foul gives Kansas City a first down at the 28-yard line. Awesome one trying to work his way back out of the field. That's a Tom Brady's not suffering watching Von Miller on the sideline tonight. Smith hanging in there. The pass a little high and incomplete. Going up for it but unable to bring it in is Dwayne Ball, second down and 10. Now, one thing that you notice, here we go breaking on the end cut here, about Alex Smith and the Kansas City Chiefs, they're much more comfortable throwing the ball inside. Some of these little skinny posts and balls to the tight end right over the middle than he is to the outside. He's not a big, strong arm guy. He's a guy that has to sort of be able to see it, deliver it quickly, on time. That's his strength. Smith completing less than 50% of his passes tonight. 16 of 36 on second down and 10. Backing up, backing away, avoiding the sack. And then just has to throw it away. Third down and 10. Well, obviously the right decision, the same discussion we just had about it being a three-score game. You have to at least knock it down to a two-score game, which potentially could involve a field goal as well. Although this would be a big stop if Denver's defense could come up with one because then conceivably they'd get Peyton Manning on the bench the rest of the game, not yeah. have to risk him. And remember, is in the last two minutes against San Diego, he got hurt. I think it's a four-down situation here, down by 17. Miller's back on the field. It's third down and 10 from the 28. And they jump up front, and the play is stopped. Malik Jackson and Robert Ayers both coming across the line. Smith clapping, indicating that it should be against the defense. Then again. Neutral zone infraction. Defense, number 91. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Ayers. Robert Ayers, one of those guys that really was considered a bust as well, but... He's come back now in kind of a backup role, but four and a half sacks. And I'll tell you, watching him on tape a week ago, I, and he's got a little of his explosiveness back. They, they have some good depth. Sylvester Williams, their number one overall pick this year, can't even get on the field. That makes it third down and five. Four receivers to the right, including Charles, who goes in motion. The pass is caught by McCluster. Gets some blocking, and Dexter McCluster will take the ball to the 10-yard line. So a huge conversion. Adams makes the tackle. It's going to make it first down. And if they spot it at the 10-yard line, and they will, first and goal. You just see, just trying to get a little crowd going there. Kayvon Webster just couldn't get through to pick up McCluster. And this is really one of the better drives we've seen out of the Chiefs tonight. Clock winding down to five minutes to play in the fourth.
Smith with protection, and the pass is caught, but does he come in inbounds? No. Anthony Fasano made the catch, but could not come down inbounds. He got one foot down, and all he had to do was slam his heel down on the other one. This would have been a touchdown. He goes up, makes a tough catch. He's going to get one foot down. Now you've got to take that back heel and slam it into the ground. Ooh, that's pretty close. Was... Left down. Nope. Well, the rest of them is out. His hip hit that ground. That's a pretty interesting call. Andy Reid's going to say, let's take one yeah. look at that. Certainly worth a challenge. As Andy throws the flag, they'll take a peek at it upstairs. Kansas City has challenged the previous play. Incomplete pass versus the score. Harry to the hood. Back after this. Looking at this during the break, we think this is going to be a touchdown now because the shin or calf area goes down as well as the foot. Here's another look at Fasano in the end zone. If the shin is down the hip any body part in there the hip is down before anything goes out of bounds you can see it pretty well from this angle here there's space the shin is yep. down there that's enough the yep. hip then follows and the elbow is off the ground nothing out of bounds that's a touchdown after reviewing the play with clear possession the left calf and the left hip landed in the end zone prior to the left Elbow landing out of bounds to score. So a great challenge by Reed. It works. 456. Remaining in regulation and with an extra point forthcoming, it'll be 27-17. Catch a break, and now who knows? Kind of interesting. I think at this point you have to think onside kick, don't you? Even though you have all your timeouts remaining. One well, up against Peyton, kind of tough to assume you're going to get a three and out. Decision time for Andy Reid. Ryan suck up to make it a 27 to 17 game. And he does. It's a very interesting call here for Reid. Do you do you onside kick it here? They've told the longtime Chicago Bears special teams coach and he's one of the best in the league and coming over and joining Andy Reid staff this year I, I tell you I, I do it I, I go on site kick because it's a 10-point game even if you give up a field goal here you're still within a two-score game they score a touchdown obviously it's going to be over but you have to take all the shots you can to try and get back possession I, it, it's not a it's this is this is a tough call, but I think I would go for it here and take a chance I could hold them to a field goal anyway. Exactly what uh, each of the special teams units are discussing right now. And in fact, uh, some other guys may come in for Denver with the better hands anticipating this onside kick. And they send only Holiday back and the other 10 guys will come up near the 45 yard line chiefs out in a balanced formation of course you can't overload the way you used to but you can sort of play it to one side a lot of teams in this situation like to do that little pooch kick right in front and make one guy make a play they have a couple of guys right here in the center so that one may be taken away here as well got some receivers there as well you got demarius thomas and eric decker are out there along the line for denver but Reed elects to kick it away and give Manning the ball at the 20 yard line. Can't argue it was one of those kind of decisions, but now pressure's on and you've got the best offense and one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game and you really need a three and out. Of course, they've played to this defense all season long. Why not? Great job by that offensive line for Denver tonight. You saw that Kansas City with 36 sacks. That's four a game, leading the league coming in. And Manning's barely been touched tonight. Hasn't been sacked at all. Comes up in the pistol. 
on first down. Give it to Moreno, and he picks up five yards, and we go to Michelle. Well, Wes Welker is back in the locker room being evaluated for concussion, Allen. For the Chiefs, right guard John Asamoah just went to the locker room. He's questionable with a calf. All right, thank you, Michelle. Meanwhile, Kansas City has just taken a timeout here after a five-yard gain. It'll be second down and five. The Denver Broncos, one of the original AFL teams, and their owner over the last 30 years, Pat Bolin. And there he is before the game, 30th season, as the owner and CEO of the team acknowledging the crowd, and they acknowledged him because uh, he picked up his 300th career win as an owner, regular and postseason combined in their last outing, and that's uh, a pretty good track record over 30 years. Two Super Bowls along the way as well. On second and five, this is Moreno, and if Kansas City takes a timeout here, there's John Elway. It will be third down, and they will, and this has got a huge play coming up. Offensive line here, Chris. Yeah, this has been, in my mind, the difference in the game. Chris Clark, Orlando Franklin have done well enough against the best tandem of pass rushers in the NFL. Those two guys, Tom Ali and Justin Houston, have been dominating all season long, but Chris Clark, the backup to Ryan Clady, has been good enough here tonight. I think he's played pretty well out. No doubt. The defense needs to play very well on this particular play. This is huge. Down to one timeout, third and four. Need to get the ball back in a hurry. Manning rolling. Throwing. Caught by Decker, but Decker is going to get forced out of bounds. Just short of the first down by Marcus Cooper. Well, this is going to be interesting because he reached the ball towards that first down marker. Spotted a half yard shy. And where did he go out of bounds? He's reaching the ball before he truly hits anything out of bounds. Let's take a look. Nothing's out of bounds, and that ball looks like it's across the 30. Enough to overturn is the question. This is this is the perfect illustration of the phrase you've heard a million times. Indisputable visual evidence. And for John it's, Fox. It's, it's challengeable. Del Rio will challenge it. So either it's going to be a first down, which would be huge, or a fourth down with the clock stopped because he went out of bounds. And Kansas Denver's City figures to get the ball back. Forward progress spot in relationship to the line out of bounds. Very interesting. Well, really nothing to lose there. It's very, I mean, it's just very difficult to overturn what the ruling is on the field when you look at it from that angle. Well, there's no doubt that the ball is beyond that marker. It's just a matter of where it's considered out of bounds. It's almost like a mosaic. I mean, you have to look at a couple of angles and figure it out. Very often that doesn't get overturned when you have to look at it from three different positions. One more look at it, but, you know, I mean, as I say, it's it's got to be indisputable where is it indisputable well there's nothing out of bounds at that point and i think that's indisputable that the ball is beyond that line now where does it end up out of bounds and when does it count as being out of bounds i guess is the question i was told at one time is that there's like two different rules for where you mark the ball one when you're running right along the boundary vertically and another when you're coming at an angle so this is an interesting call the whole thing is where the ball is 
when he's out of bounds. When he crosses I, I, I the plane think, of the of the boundary, it, where is the ball? Yeah, I, I think as long as he's in bounds and that ball is beyond that marker, this should be a first down. We'll see. John Perry, the there play. he is. Receiver stuck the ball forward. The 30 and one quarter yard line. It'll be first and ten. The 30 and one quarter yard line. There you go. Jack Del Rio going with his gut. You know what was interesting about talking with Jack is how he was saying he get, made a phone call to Bruce Arians about being an interim coach. You remember that whole conversation? Uh, right. And just said, I just wanted to double check and make sure I was doing everything right. And nearly everything he kind of had planned and was doing is exactly what Bruce Arians was telling him. Bruce had to fill in for Chuck Pagano and Indy. He did a great job and led to the head coaching job that Bruce now has with the six and four Arizona Cardinals. First down to the 30 yard line. And now here's Moreno again. Kansas City is down to one timeout. And then they'll stop the clock at the two minute warning. And a little the rough housing ensues. Now you got to stop if yeah. you're the Denver Broncos. You can't go back 15 yards. I don't care if the guy tomahawk charged. You, you, you can't. You can't get a penalty here. John Fox with the clicker in his hand again. <laughs> For third. Chiefs final just used their final timeout. been a good game I, I, I tell you I think this really sets up the rest of the season in this division as being very interesting the Kansas City Chiefs regardless of what happens out here tonight have traveled into this stadium and put on a performance that really was just a few mistakes away from being a potential win here I mean I just go back to that first quarter where maybe the maybe the scene was a little too big for him at first but a game that they're going to use going forward here. Had their chances, no question about it. They go home next week again. They play San Diego in Kansas City, and Denver goes to New England, and then the two teams meet, Kansas City and Denver, and Kansas City in two weeks. So a long way from determining the one seed or the five seed. This was a big day in the NFL today. A lot of big games, a lot of close games. Ball start, <laughs> offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, second down. Left guard Zane Beatles. The pro bowler. We call Zane the Peyton Manning of the offensive line. Kind of keeps them all straight up there. But that one didn't help. 19 accepted penalties in the game, 11 against Denver. Second and 13. Pass caught up to the 31 yard line. That's Demarius Thomas. And that'll make it third down and nine for the Broncos. Boy, that was tight coverage by Marcus Cooper on the outside, number 31. And in this situation, Peyton Manning get that thing in there in the tightest of spots. Talking to Bob Sutton, the defensive coordinator, he said, honestly, there are times I tell my defensive backs, I don't know what to tell you. It's just that good. Manning taking that play clock all the way down. Trying to convert a third and eight. Stepping away, throws, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Demarius Thomas. So that's a good break for Kansas City because the clock stops at 351 and they're going to get the ball back. May have been the first time that that ankle came into play a little bit. Good step up by Peyton Manning to get away from the pressure by Halle but then just couldn't make this pivot and throw back going against the grain. I'm sure that really torqued that high ankle sprain, so the Chiefs are going to have a chance. Fifth punt of the night for Britton Colquitt. His brother has punted seven times. On the other side. Chance. The 23-yard line, the cluster looking for room, and then gets upended as he reaches the 30-yard line. Monte Ball makes the tackle, 338. 
remaining in the fourth. Nobody ever talks about special teams, but the coverage units tonight on the punt coverage for the Denver Broncos has been sensational. It's just been sensational. That was a big opportunity. There was room there for Dexter McCluster. No timeouts for Casey. Of course, you're in a situation right now where you go either way here. Touchdown, field goal, preferable, of course. But if you have to go field goal, touchdown, whatever it takes. First things first, at least try to get into field goal range. Smith will throw and reaching back for it and making wow. the catch. Great catch was McCluster along the sideline. Rogers Cromartie right there with him. That was amazing. See if he gets this other foot down. Sure does. What a fantastic that catch that was against the best coverage guy of the Denver Broncos. Nice throw by Alex Smith, too. And it stops the clock at 332. From the pistol. Take to Charles. Smith, he's going to take off. And Alex Smith. Runs to the 45-yard line. Tackled there by Sean Phillips. They come up without a huddle. A little more than three minutes to play. Second down and four. Four-man rush. Chase throws and just has to throw it away. To make it third down and four. At that time, pressure inside flushed him out of the pocket. Sean Phillips one more time getting in there, and you could tell both these teams getting a little tired at this point. Offensive linemen standing up. Defensive linemen don't have quite the same pop. This has been an exhausting pace to this game. This will be the 70th play of the night, run by Kansas City. Two backups on the right side now for this offensive line. Denver needs to recognize it, put some pressure on them. Blitz coming. Pass has gotten away. It's incomplete. Dwayne Bowe, the intended receiver, Rogers Cromartie with the coverage. Fourth down. There's Dwayne Bowe working against the best for the Broncos. And look at the speed. That's the difference. The makeup speed. Dominic Rogers Cromarty just simply much faster than Bo is, and he was able to catch him despite the fact Bo got early position. Fourth and four. Smith to the outside, too low. And the Broncos think they've intercepted it. Doesn't matter though. Brute may have come up with the ball, but regardless, the pass is incomplete at worst. And they turn the ball over on downs. Well, they go right back to it here. Try to go back shoulder again. And Dominic Rogers pro Marty. Not so sure that ball ever did hit the ground, but really from the Broncos' standpoint, they didn't want it anyway. So Denver winds up with the ball at the 46-yard line. Manning will have to run two plays before the two-minute warning in all likelihood, and this one, unless this one takes more than 10 seconds, which it won't. And Moreno picks up three. It'll be second down. So we'll have to run one more play, and then the clock will stop at the two-minute warning. But a 10-point lead. As they look at Fisher on the sideline. Yeah, and that's an interesting situation now. We see Fisher out of the game. We see Osamwa out of the game. Two backups in. There are no more offensive linemen. But you've got to think moving forward, how are those guys coming out of this game? 15 straight regular season games, scoring 25 or more points. NFL record, the equivalent of almost one full season, and now you have a full start. Full start, offense, number 81, five-yard penalty, second down. Joel Dreesen, the number two tight end. We're starting to get back to full strength a little bit for them, getting Joel Dreesen back in there. 
I'm sure the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be disappointed with the result. And I think maybe this is one that they needed. You know, sometimes they say horse races, you needed that race. They, they may have needed this race. They may have needed coming into this atmosphere. And especially with the Arrowhead crowd and full throat in a couple of weeks when the Denver Broncos come into Kansas City. Two-minute warning in Denver with the score. 27-17 Broncos. That's in seven days and coming up in a few minutes, the Wendy's post-game report. Michelle on the field with the stars of the game. Bob, Tony, and Mike break it down. Look at other news around the league, and we'll look ahead to Bronx Pats, and we go to Michelle right now. Well, Chiefs right tackle Eric Fisher, Al, is doubtful with a shoulder injury. He'd been on the injury report week one with a shoulder. Not sure if this was related, but right now doubtful. And there he is, the number one overall pick in this spring's draft. And, of course, uh, they go home after the game and spend the next couple of weeks at home. San Diego coming up next week and then Denver right back in there. Third down and 12. Up, up, up. I'm just concerned about chewing up at least 40 seconds. Moreno is right there. Payton, as you look at right there, he's been kept very clean. You know, our man Andy Freeland just reminded me today's the 45th anniversary of the Heidi game. Is that right? On NBC. So don't touch that dial. Don't touch dial. that dial. You never know. That, that, that game kind of changed things in football, didn't it? Like, and it and in nobody television. was allowed to leave any game whatsoever again. Changed a few things in the, in the broadcasting land as well. Britton Colquitt, they'll wait for the clock to go all the way down. And take the time out right here with 115 remaining. So Jack Del Rio is on his way to a second win instead of John Fox. And again with John, we don't know exactly when Coach Fox can get back on the sideline. He hopes to get back to Denver in a week or a week and a half. And Doctors will determine that. There's John Elway, of course. And, and with Foxy, it's uh, going to be tough to be back here and, you know, be living five minutes from the office and, and keep him away. Yeah, well, that's what he was telling us, right? He was like, hey, you know, I wanted to come back, and John Elway told me, no way, you stay put, because I know what's going to happen if you get within five minutes of the office, you're going to come in, and that's not in your best interest. down kick and unless you get some nice little backspin on it tick 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 yeah flag is down that took 11 seconds and the spot is the 13 and John Perry has spent a lot of time in your living room tonight wherever you watch the game you know very few people watch it in the living room I don't know why we say that yeah your iPad now. <laughs> Player out of bounds. Voluntarily. Kicking team. Left gunner. Kansas City has elected five yard penalty. Will re kick. Replay fourth down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now Peyton Manning, one of the uh, records that is in sight for him is most touchdown passes in the season so he and Brady in the year Brady had 50 to set the record each had 33 but in game 10 Tom threw five to give him 38 Peyton with one tonight 34 so he's on a pace right now where 34 through 10 games was gonna run around that mark Brady wound up in his last six games that year throwing only 12 so I think my money would be on Manning right now yeah, the, the only statistic that matters tonight is that that guy never got knocked down. And at this point in the season, another week of Peyton Manning not hurting that ankle just cannot be underestimated the value of what's happened here tonight on that front and get the win. And he 
Syracuse has called for at the 21 yard line. I think it would have declined the penalty though as KC and gotten those 11 seconds back. Yeah, you, you have to go fast at this point, obviously. And while maybe not a Hail Mary, something close to it because you're going to have to complete a ball, get your team up, stop the clock, kick a field goal, get an onside kick, and throw a couple more Hail Marys. So there's a lot of work left to be done without any timeouts. Smith tonight. 19 of 43. So well under 50 percent. Broncos pass defense has really steadied in the last few weeks. Pass out in the flat. Even tackled inbounds is Jamal Charles to keep that clock going. Now that's a mistake. You don't think about it, but you almost have to throw a Hail Mary in that situation and take your chances. Right. At some point, it's got to go 50 yards and you got to stop the clock and kick a field goal. Instead, you had a, a pass that loses a yard. You're taking a ton of time off the clock. Smith running around. Roll it. <laughs> and deep that field and almost intercepted at the 45 yard line. Rodgers Cromarty. Who played for Andy Reid in Philadelphia? Got another penalty marker down. Ineligible player downfield. Offense number 79. Five yard penalty. Second down. Maybe the ninth penalty on Kansas City tonight. 13 against Denver and 15 seconds remaining in the game. You know, was it the kind of night they hoped for from the pass rushers of the Kansas City Chiefs? They were really hoping they got to knock Peyton Manning around and just never got that job done. Broncos will go to 9 and 1, which means they will have won 20 of their last 21 regular season games. They only lost to Indianapolis. That's Sean Phillips right there to swallow up Charles, and that'll take us. To the end of the game where the Denver Broncos never trailed and are tied for first place in the AFC West with Kansas City with a mark of nine wins and one loss. 27 to 17, the Broncos win it. Coming up next, it'll be the Wendy's Postman Report when we come back.